Ahoy, wonders, and welcome back to the table. Been a good week. Uh, by the way, if you enjoy this flag back here and want to show your naturally wonderful side for all your natural wonderness, you can, you can get it right now on sharkrobot.com. Dash team, dash four, dash star. Look at that. It's even appropriately timed to hey, the merch card I have. Also, the Natural Wonder shirt also available. But still. Yep. Flag available now also yeah. on there. Limited run, only about... Uh, 70 or so left. Yeah, so get them while they exist, because soon they won't. And there you go. I mean, they'll still exist. They'll just have been bought by people other than... Yes, yes they, they might people, not be available People will have purchase. them. People will be flying them from flagpoles or yeah. having them on the wall or yeah. turning them into quilts. I don't know. Do uh, what you will with it. You buy tapes. it. Other people. Jerks for all you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want somebody that is not as good a person as you for to have it? For just pennies a day. <laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good to be back. Yeah. Cor corner of the market. Put them up on eBay. We don't care. We're capitalists. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Buy 70 of them, but sell them like you bought a thousand. Ooh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Buy in bulk. There's no deal for it, but you can do it anyway. Yeah. But then you can <laughs> sell them in bulk. The, the deal is then we sell them all real quick. <laughs> there you go. I mean, we're going to be bringing a few with us to AWA this weekend. That'll yep. be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Other than that. How you guys been? How, 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 was your, how was your week that I've still been seeing you guys, but not at the table? <laughs> <laughs> well, table-related, my week is pretty limited. Fair enough. So, uh, you know, you, you, you've seen most of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you two have spent more time at this table since the last time we were here than the rest of us. Accurate. So there's a reason for that, which will become apparent at a later date. <gasps> Maybe soon, maybe later, who knows? Yeah. Who, who knows? Who knows? You've also had more time at tables in general, what with Unexpectables and Roll With Me. And such. Yeah, maybe. yeah, I actually had a lot of fun with uh, yesterday's session. It was a one-off because my buddy and one of my players, Shadow Dancer Bob's Cotton Florence, uh, mm. I haven't heard much from him other than he wasn't going to be able to make it. I hope he's doing well. If you're able to see this right now, Shadow, I hope you're doing good. Or for anybody out there that's in North Carolina or Virginia that's getting hit by this stuff, South Carolina as well, just... Stay safe, guys. Mm -hmm. We hope you're doing well. Yeah. Um, yeah, not much else to say other than that. The one shot went really well. I had a lot of fun with it. I managed to make it a canonical tie-in thing. And Ooh. Nice. Unexpectables is going pretty well. We're, uh, we're off to... We're, we're a bunch of level fives going off to fight an ancient silver dragon, so that's pretty fun. All right. That's terrifying. But also, we got to introduce two other guest characters, uh, Ed Bosco and Lime Malicious from Twitch. Fun. Nice. Oh, so, nice. yeah, it's a... It's yeah, it's a six man party right now. Wow. <laughs> which that I sounds which like is a lot which, to is, keep which track is chaotic of. because I feel bad for Limes because when Limes is on board for when we're doing this, it's like five in the morning for her. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh well, let's I'm let's get such a trooper. Let's get back to what matters though, and that's the natural wonders. We're in a new city and we have to get ourselves a goddamn permit in order to exist here. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, Yes. <laughs> the unfortunate part of it is, is that the guard don't believe you when you say you have an audience with the king because... And nobody's going to go ahead and check that. <laughs> well, I mean, these it's... two guards kind of took the paper away and just threw it to the side, not caring. So that was that's military that, paperwork. That's, that's kind of their fault. Oh, don't worry. I'm sure that will come back and bite them in the ass sooner or later. That's pretty much treason, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yes, you have discovered that by going uh, to one of the Courtship of Crimsons, uh, which is the place where the bank essentially? Yeah, pretty much the ruby economy for this uh, for this place because rubies are what hold your prestige and pretty much get you inside the Acropolis, which is the center point of the entire city. Uh, Courtship of Crimson, also what they call it when a first date lands on that type of the month. Mm. There you go. That, that type of the month. Type yeah, that of month. type of that month. type of month. Yeah, you thought I said something different, but I, I fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Still stuck the landing. Though. Yep. No, it's great. I give it a six out of ten. Uh, you you rolled fair. through it and you got your hands <laughs> up in the end. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not going to dispute that. Have another Bishop Crackberry, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> so we so we talked to a, to a teller at Yon Ruby Bank, and an he, old elephant by the name of Khan. Yeah, yes. and and he seemed to to at least lend a big sympathetic ear, even if he was like, I really can't do much. But here's my friend's name. Yeah, maybe, we're looking for Naris. Maybe if you uh, take Hippolyte. this Hippolyte Naris. Yep. Maybe if you take this or is over it to Hippolyte in Naris. It's Hippolyte Naris. Hippolyte okay. Naris. And uh, Naris is the name of uh, the treasure hunters cult that look for uh, relics that come out of the Realm Gate, which leads from Salima. Nothing bad ever comes from cults. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Realm Gate sounds like fun. 
Uh, so with that in mind, uh, you guys are still in the city at this point. It is currently 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, you have been given your mission. You have the paperwork from uh, Khan. He says go out to Furfos to find uh, his buddy of his who lives out where the cult is. Uh, he can forge you paperwork because he used to work for the Courtship of Crimson. Yeah, uh, by, the, by the way, this guy and the other guy that we were mentioned that, you know, forges work, is this the same dude? Like, the dude that's going to illegally forge us paperwork? It's not illegal, because they, he, Khan did mention to you that this gentleman, uh, Hippolyte, that you're going to go visit, he was part of the courtship, and since he's a Luxodon, his word has way more validity than most people. Okay. So even if he makes one and it's not part of the legal, like, regiment, he could, like, you show it to people, they go, oh, fuck, no, this is legit. He okay. can basically make legal paperwork outside of the system. Yes. Okay. So even if it's considered forgery because he's a Luxodon and his rank from working inside the courtship, he can absolutely get you paperwork. Then I guess our next obvious stop would be Furfos out in I the was, desert, I right? I was going to say, that's, yep. that's where I would want Furfos us to Furfos is a little bit of a travels outside of the desert. It'll take you at least a half a day to travel there by foot without distraction. Can we rent camels? That is a good question. Roll a uh, in, uh, investigation check to find someone. I hope you guys are better. Seven. Uh, Sixteen. Seven is what? Wait, no. Uh, nine. Nine. Yeah, I, I have proficiency in that. <laughs> Elor is the winner today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we were looking for mounts, and it turns out the guy with four legs had a better idea where they might be. He knows where to find them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll find some camel centaur. Yeah. Me, meanwhile, there's Charlotte. Kind of looks over at Eloy and looks back to you as you say, "Hey, we're gonna find camels to get out of there." He's just like, "I think we only have room for one other person on top of Eloy at most point." <laughs> yeah. So. You okay? So you gotta find mounts for your friends since you got that problem fixed up. Yeah. Uh, you. That's a that's an optimistic way to put it. The downer way to put it is, well, Eloy can't ride shit, so he's walking regardless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's not like we can find a donkey for donkey man. So. <laughs> well, you, you're so you're thinking mount. Okay, these guys either need a horse or a donkey because deer. No, fuck those guys. Uh, yeah. They, you, you think a, a deer can hold a man with their <laughs> wimpy little deer spines? I think not. Would, so, uh, you decide to ask this friendly little fella over here, uh, he's a, uh, fire genasi, kind of, like, pawning off, like, rides to little kids for these weird creatures with giant tumors on their backs that you've never seen before. Alright. That, that is the, that is the worst horse I've ever seen. Uh, those are called camels, actually. Fascinating. I... They're like lumpy horses, yes. <laughs> I mean, why, though? I know, friends, sometimes they have two humps. That is the best question I've ever heard when asking about them. <laughs> Why? I don't know, man. They, they look like somebody was designing a horse and got drunk halfway through. Not inaccurate. <laughs> okay, well, here's my... Oh, fuck. I got a five in nature. Ezra pats the hump the, of the uh, the camel. A five in goes, nature, you well, say. this is where they store its heart and to keep it safe. <laughs> away from like the exposed parts of its the body. The camel like spits in chest. your face. Ah! <laughs> they keep all the precious meat in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this bad boy holds a lot of precious meat. Yeah, yeah this is the tenderloin. <laughs> You're not planning to eat my camels, are you, sir? They're mainly used for transport. I mean, Absolutely not. We were actually hoping to see if we could uh, t t rent some steeds as we were going to have to be traveling uh, quite a distance. Ah, yes, yes, of course. We can absolutely sell you some of these uh, camels to... Where, where are you headed? Uh, Phosphoros? Furfos? Uh, Furfos. Furfos. Oh, that's that. no problem at all. I can probably rent these to you for at least 100 a person. Ooh. 100 what? Gold. Okay, that's better. <laughs> you are in the, you are in the ring. You're you're in the ring of mortals. They do work with gold here. Yeah, because I was gonna say we were given a hundred rubies, and it's like <laughs> I don't. Mm. Well, remember you could you have the rupees, you can't use them in trade. Yeah. yeah. All right. Can you can you load me up with a bunch of water skins too? On 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 top of that, I got I got like. Well, friend, there's a giant fountain right over there. He points over to the giant elephant head that's sticking out, that's letting the waterfall come out of its mouth. It's a giant pool of water. Is that going to be all right? That's not like sacred holy water. No, I know you. No, take a look. There's a couple of uh, children actually walking over with jugs and filling it up with water. Okay, good. I just I know you boys are real into your elephants. I don't I don't want to do nothing sacrilegious. Oh, that's that's very kind of you, sir. Thank you for 
taking the time to feel that that was a, ne a necessity to address. Just don't bathe in it. That's a, that's a no-no. That's for the monkeys. <laughs> oh, that's that's all you right. You watch a little tambourine just kind of just like wanders in, <laughs> jumps into the water. That's all right. I always just wait for the for the bathing to come from the sky. I figure that's when the gods want me to be clean. I you know, it's... can't argue. I guess. <laughs> Fair point. If they want it so bad, bring it to you. <laughs> I mean, that, that Charlotte just kind of looks at you. I mean, that's what we tell the kids to make them not be scared of rain. I mean, does it work? No, they still hate it. No. Well, you, you tried. Kids okay, do my, notoriously my, hate bathing. Point two. They're afraid of it, though? Well, considering my race, they look at us and sometimes can believe that we can summon rain or the, or the sun or whatever. They think we can control weather, basically. Because of what we used to do on the farms. Fair enough. Hmm. All right, so... A uh, hundred gold per camel? A hundred gold per camel. If you want to buy water skins, it's going to cost you five silver per water skin. Each of you all have one, considering that there's a pack of each. But if you want to load up on water skins, uh, the, the fella also looks to you after you asking that. It's like, well, you do have protection, don't you? I mean, I got, I got this tarp. Oh, I'm sure that will work for you, considering you're... I've just never seen you before. You're part camel? Do, do I look like I have a hump? Is that... Am I gaining weight? No, oh, I mean, no, he's an asinine centaur. Donkey. Ah, <laughs> ah, I understand. Sorry. I have a thousand pardons. I've never seen a centaur in, these area in this area before. We've only ever heard of them to the north, only in stories. Uh, yes, we, we can, you, the tarp will at least suit you, sir, but for your allies, walking out into the sun for any uh, exposed amount of time is a death wish. Well, that's why I've got this. Oh, man. You'll need much more than that, my, good, my dear friend. I've been in the desert. Latin for camel is just camel. There's not going to be any, <laughs> any fun name for a camel centaur. A camel. Yeah, it's Yon's almost like they didn't make it to the Latin-speaking countries. Uh, <laughs> scrying orb. Please translate camel. <laughs> Legitimate, Larry. It's, it's camel, you idiot. It's cameline centaur. Uh, well, if we if we were to wrap, I I, I have you know a cloak as well. It's, is is this still not enough to, to protect us? I've never traveled in the desert. Before. Oh, you'll need much baggier clothes than that, sir. You want to keep yourself insulated with as much cool air as you possibly could. Luckily for you, we also have a fine selection of desert clothing for just such an occasion. Insight. I want to see if this guy's scamming me. All right, go <laughs> for it. Wait, no, hold on. Uh, uh, eighteen. Eighteen. No, he's being sincere. Like, what's the point in having a customer base if they're just going to go out into the desert and get heat stroke? I guess that's true. <laughs> he, oh. can, he can offer you guys, for 20 gold pieces, a piece of clothing that will insulate you and keep you from uh, taking heat damage while walking in the desert. All right, and... And uh, empty who water skin will cost you five silver. Who all is with us at this point? Is everybody here? Uh, everyone except for Mr. Large is here. Uh, roll it. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to bring this up. It might behoove us to leave a few behind just to try to gather information on our quarry. That is true. And well, I, I don't think I need to stay behind. I'm always behooved. That's a very, very good point. <laughs> and also, I just realized I made a mistake before. I said... I said, uh, Jill did I say Jillian or Charlotte? You said Charlotte. Okay, good, because... No, then I did do it wrong. It's supposed <laughs> to be Jillian, not Charlotte. Ah, uh, okay. 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 Yeah. Jillian's the one that thinks they can control the weather? Yes. Gotcha. Because she's right. the, the, the plant race mm -hmm. of elves. Uh, Charlotte actually looks rather hesitant when talking about going out into the desert. You can see it on her face. She's look a she looks a little pensive about walking out into a place that looks like there's no water. She might be best to stay behind just to stay hydrated. Yeah, you, uh, you, you're, you're, you're part of the, the, the tribe that likes to hang out in the water a lot, right? I mean, so, I hope so, being a sea elf. Yeah, this, this might be a rough road for you. If you want to stay back and, uh, you know, stay where it's cooler, I, uh, I absolutely understand and wouldn't hold it against you. If I can... I don't... I, I, I'm sorry, she's, sorry. she's just going to quickly just go. No, go ahead. I don't mean to be a coward, Captain... But yes, <laughs> but absolutely yes. It would just be a, it, it would be extra resources. And honestly, you could probably be, you know, kind of scoping things out around here, maybe seeing if you can get any intel as far as, you know, best places to, to try and reach the king should this 
Oh, not of course. Work out. And when the night sky finally appears to us, I can absolutely speak with my uh, with the with the night sky and converse with him about where we need to go. So, if anything, if you return uh, before uh, after nightfall, I should have some more information for you. If I were to throw out a suggestion, I would say that everybody besides us and Frida stay here, as Frida would be most excellent in making sure we don't die of heat stroke should we suffer from it. That would make sense to me. Um, <laughs> Frank, how, how, how much experience do you have in, in desert travel? Oh, I, I feel absolutely fine. He, like, holds his hand out. You actually see, like, parts of his flesh are actually steaming, but it almost looks like it's, like, sizzling on cooked leather, so it's not like it actually bothers him. <laughs> Can't stand the heat and all that, what they say. Oh, no, he's fine. Oh, no, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He stays in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. That's he, the implication. He, he yeah, goes yeah. where it's hottest. Eloy, Eloy takes the opportunity sorting through the desert clothes. He finds himself a pair of gauzy harem pants and tries them on, just because I, fu- I think that's a funny image. Okay. <laughs> he tries pants I'll, on with his four legs? Yep, with just his front legs. Okay. Yeah, I like these. They're like they're like loose and baggy, and but but breezy, too. I like it. I mean, your, your ass is kind of hanging out. Yeah, I mean, it always does that. It's fine. I guess that's true. <laughs> Dagon finds a nice, like, black Lawrence of Arabia-esque wrap. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what they are. They're, like, dark, they're dark clothed, uh, dark, dark colored versions of these, so you're not wearing anything that's going to, like, absorb sunlight, because that would be kind of stupid in that regard. Mm-hmm. You're, you're just adding heat onto yourself for no goddamn reason. Uh, Dagon, by the way, still broke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I have to. I'm going to have to ask how is money being transferred? Yeah, uh, for this? yeah, and, I, and that's why I'm trying to figure out who all is exactly going. Because why that, money is a concern, I'd suggest just taking one person. Though, yeah. Those that seem like they're willing to at least take this journey, but they don't feel remorse if they get sent back, are uh, Frank, Frida, and uh, and Jillian. Like yeah. those three are ready to go whenever you need them. And Jillian would probably be better to stay around water too, since she's a plant See. elf. Uh, this is the El- Eladrin. Eladrin. Eldrin. Eldrin. E- Eloy, while he's paying for uh, for his harem pants, uh, slips an extra, like, 120 gold to the guy for, for whatever Mr. Dagon gets, just, like, not to make a big deal out of it. Okay, friend. You have a... You now have a... Pretty much add this in your inventory. I have, I have a 70 gold deficit... Or I have a 70 gold credit right now. Hmm. <laughs> so at this point, you guys... Uh, so, well... You have one, you have one, you didn't pay yet. Yeah. Uh, I drop off the... Jill- Jillian doesn't look like she's not, she's not nonplussed about this either. And, like, even the guy looks to her and, and goes, uh, Ma'am, you seem like you would be the worst off apart from your CL friend here. Are you quite all right? Oh, yeah, no, this is absolutely fine. Like, she's in her summer form. The heat uh, so is please, not uh, Please tell me her. she has, like, a cactus on her head and just... <laughs> oh, yeah, no, she's got, she's got like, a... Like a fumbleweed thorns, like in the in the mid- <laughs> midst of her hair. So does this bother you much at all? This this weather out here? Oh no, not at all. This I've I'm used to working out in the in the like dastardly like most deliriously hot sum, uh, summer's nights and days. This is absolutely fine. I mean, if worst case scenario, I can if I have to switch to my other forms, I can take a garb of clothing with me. But so long as I stay in my Summer uh, form, I can handle this. That is so cool. You know, back home, you have to study the Druid ways for like 20 years to be able to do that. And considering the average life expectancy is like 15, it seems like a really tough hurdle to get n- over. Yeah, not too many people can do stuff like that. That is really <laughs> neat. So she's not going to, she doesn't need the article of clothing so long as she remains in her summer form. Okay. However, that still c- leaves the transport, which would be another hundred for an extra, for, for, a, for a camel. I'll let you figure that out, Captain. I polish off the rest of the wine that is in my canteen, and I'm going to go fill it with water. All righty. Uh, well, Frida, I would like to have someone with uh, with medical experience to be in this party going out to the desert, because honestly... She, I, I, she I, has garbed herself the most. She, like, already <laughs> got one. She's got, like, two layers of it. Excellent. <laughs> I know you. I know this bright light probably isn't... Uh, Optimal and exactly where you'd like to be, but uh, I would I would love to have you come along with us. Uh, I looked to, to Jillian, uh, Charlotte, and Frank. Frank. 
you three, I would like for you to stay here and just try and gather intel if you can uh, and just be ready for when we come back on the off chance that this doesn't work if there's any sort of alternate way into where we're trying to get. Uh, Jillian actually like kind of like holds her hand up a second. Uh, Captain, if I may. Yes. Since we don't technically have a permit to be selling off rubies just yet, I still think it would be wise if we had a little bit on our own person, if maybe we could find a way around this while you guys are gone. That's understandable. Um, we have a hundred rupee, rubies that we got. Yep. I mean, we can't sell them, so yeah. they're worthless. You can't, you can't sell them and yeah. use them, but she's just like, if I don't know, there, we, there we, might be some underhanded ways. Maybe be able to grease some palms. Yeah. yeah, grease some palms. Maybe sell some secrets to the followers of Deimos. And maybe we can get somewhere. That's true. I don't want to give them all of them just in case we need them. What do you think? Uh, Dagon's gone off to fill his he'd water. Be, he, he'd, he'd be coming back by okay. now. The fountain wasn't very far away. He's also, with that 70 gold deficit, going to get a pair of goggles in case of a sandstorm. Okay. Uh, well, wearing those, you will not take disadvantage rolls to uh, to blistering like sands or anything. So you, you, like, no deficits to perception so long as you wear them. Yep. Uh, sorry, right, what I'm, was the question? I'm trying on goggles. Dunk. Looking at the 100 rubies we've got. Well, Jillian brings up a good point that while they're here, maybe having some rubies to grease some palms, uh, just in case there's some maybe, let's say, underhanded ways of getting where we want to ah, go. I see where you're going. What's the gold to rupee ratio? Uh, it's a thousand gold to one rupee. I think 20 rubies would probably do just fine for the people staying here. It'd be good for us to have some out there as well in case we need to find some underhanded methods ourselves. You know what? Here's 30, I say. This gives 10 to each of you, just in case you need to split up for something. That's fine. They, they will accept this graciously. That way we still have uh, 70, which is still a, still a good number, I feel, to, to bargain with. It is, especially since you guys are going off to Furfos, which, like, the law is not as gripped when it comes to rupee trade. Yeah, essentially now Dagon looks like a... Like Ray from the beginning of episode seven, only it's all black <laughs> instead of beige. <laughs> All right, so for the four of you guys and Frida, that will be 400 for the camel. Uh, well, actually, 300. 300. Cents. Yeah, yeah. 300 for the camel. Uh, if you guys want to get extra water skins, it's going to be seven pieces of silver uh, per one. And uh, we're only oh, going to be out there for. And the clothing is for is what 20, so that's what 80, 80 gold. Something like. Yes. So 380 altogether, or wait. Uh, well, no, because uh, uh, Frida got one for herself. Yes. Okay. Doing my math backwards. So altogether, that would be three camels and uh, three three, pieces of three sets of clothes. Okay. So that's 360 altogether. Then. Yep. Okay. Just want to make sure before I. I've been doing a um, count. Friend, if, if water does seem to be of a bit of a worry for you, I might have something else I could give you. Oh, what's that? Now, hear me out. I just nudge, I just, I just nudge Ezra, give. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, hear me out, friend. He, like, grabs you from the shoulder and pulls you over. What if? Now, you know all those bags you're carrying with you? Yeah, yeah. What if I told you there was a bag that kept you moisturized as you kept going? I mean, that's, that sounds great. It, it imbues you with all the water you could. If, as long as you store the water within the pack, your body will be completely cleansed of water. I mean, honestly, I, I'm feeling thirsty just thinking about it. Yeah, like having sure. this conversation, Ezra's just trying on his new desert, gar desert garbs. Look at this! Isn't this cool? Wow, <laughs> what wild new clothes these people have. Roll a perception check, both of you. I imagine I imagine you are now wearing a turban <laughs> instead <laughs> of a top hat. Yes. I, I've got a very I, Aladdin look going I, right now. A top or, hat with a turban wrapped or, around the top. Exactly. Ra rather yeah. Prince Ali. <laughs> yeah, you're Prince Ali Abubu. Like just the just the brim of the top hat poking out from uh, the turban. Perception is nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. Uh, mine is fourteen. All right. Uh, you don't see it. You Dagon can see that this guy's <laughs> trying to talk Eloy into buying something else. 
You you don't know if it's legit just yet, but it looks like he's still trying to sell them since Eloy was the first one to go up and ask. Dagon's just listening passively. He's not going to intercede unless he feels like he has to. He pull. Uh, the man shows you a backpack that looks like it's made of this weird rubbery leather. Every time you, you touch it, you hear like the sloshing of water on the inside. This can hold up so many gallons, my friend. So many gallons. <laughs> Slaps. So look at these gallons. <laughs> this baby Slaps can hold so many gallons of water. He is, uh, he is offering this to you to say that, hey, so this can provide you moisture. It holds up to two weeks of water without the necessity of you having to actually drink from it. Dagon, uh, with, uh, a, with an 18 insight, on a scale of one to Larry, how legit does this look? <laughs> a, with an 18? Yeah. That's an investigation. Okay. Uh, it's, it's the same stat either way, so it's yeah, still yeah, yeah. an 18. How, how does... You, you're like... You, you, there's In the back of your head, you can't conceive... The, the notion as to why this shouldn't work, but you feel like there's something amiss about it. Um, how, does, how does the water get inside you? Oh, well, that's simple, my friend. You see this? He, like, he slaps it and he presses it down on your back and you, watch, you feel the water mist out from where, the, where it's touching your back. Ooh, it tingles. Dagon being from the area uh, and probably been to the desert once or twice, uh -huh. what do I know about like how many oases there might be out there, or, like sources of water in the desert itself? Sources of water. Okay, I'm going to need you to roll a survival check. Survival, that is a 12. The desert is not without its sources of water, and it's not without its sources of uh, caves, and it's not without its sources of trees. There is, there is water out in the desert, and the road you're traveling, so long as you stay on the path and don't take a lot of detours, you'll make it just fine. Like, at yeah, worst... Just, we're just going on a half-day trek to this town anyway. Yeah, at worst, like... At worst, people who have never been accustomed to the desert before might need to, like, drink, like, need to stop and rest maybe once, at most, but this feels like just a normal trip, especially if you got camels. Yeah, I'm gonna walk up to Eloy. Uh, I assure you, the amount of time we will be out there, this will be unnecessary for your friend. All right, I might. The, guy, the, the guy just like looks to you, just like, tss, tss, and it, like spritzes <laughs> hey, in the face. Come on, come on! <sighs> Two weeks of water. You, you know what? If it, if it looks like we're staying in this town longer than expected, I might come back for that. That that does sound real neat. You know what? Fair enough. If we go out in the desert and you feel like, oh, I wish I had this, we can come back again. Yeah, we could always come back. There of you course, go. of course, you'll yes, come back. Yes, of course. As, as we always come back. <laughs> How old is this gentleman? He's 55. Okay. He looks at his fit. He's an Asimar, so <laughs> you don't, like, for you, he Relatively probably has been around Asimar. the block for, like, 300 years, but he looks like he's 55. <laughs> yeah, he's older than me. Yeah. All right, so Dagon's with that. Dagon's still in his first century. <laughs> yeah, so with that, you guys are given your camels. Uh, each of you can set out uh, whenever you feel like it, unless there's something else you need doing. Uh, I don't have anything yeah. prescient. Dagon's just brushing his camel. <laughs> Getting all the spare sand out of it. I'm yeah, going yeah. to call you Sally, says Ezra, scratching his behind the ear. <laughs> I'll take that as a compliment, Sally. Eloy reaches back and pats his own rump. Good boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 says, his, <laughs> says his ass. <laughs> the ass's ass speaks. <laughs> All right, so, uh, and Frida is also, like, just making sure that her animal is is just ready to go. She looks up at the creature. The creature looks like it's a little hesitant as she, like, reaches out to grab it. She, like, grabs the 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 lace around its mouth to, like, pull it down so she can get the on bridle. top of it. Yeah. Sorry, I don't it's know right. what that thing is. <laughs> uh, the creature looks like it's afraid of her until she like gives it this really stern face. Like she just looks at, oh, that's adorable. Stop. She just pulled the fucking Ashley. It stops instantly and she gets on. She just, she like, by looking at this creature, she willed it to stop move fidgeting. She has intimidated it. She has intimidated it. You guys are ready to move on as you see fit. Who's going to, what, what, uh, what uh, positioning are we taking here? What do you think we should call it, chick? Yes, no, we're not calling it meat. 
Uh, Dagon will lead the way since he knows the area, I guess. I mean, he's from here. Okay, but I again, I do want like, yeah. a, uh, a list of who's where. I'll follow right behind Dagon. Yeah, I'll follow behind uh, Ezra, and then Frida can bring up the rear. All righty. And with that, you guys uh, set off into the desert. Uh, you are walking along a cobblestone path that, yeah, obviously sand's gonna get on it, but it normally has like a little bit of, it has some vegetation that's laced around the uh, edges of the border of the uh, walkway, just to prove that, hey, you're heading towards land. Uh, you, uh, unless you got, roll me a perception check to look out into the desert. Uh, Dagon's gonna use a, his spyglass to do this. Okay. 18 for me. Uh, 17. Pretty good, that is a 23. Okay, you guys pretty much get all of this, no problem. Uh, with your spyglass, you actually get a, a little bit more of a vantage of like where everything is. Uh, off to the left, you you three are seeing this what looks like an arching U like like symbol sticking up out of the sand. It's kind of blurring out in the mirage off in the distance, but you can tell it's some kind of temple that's like just large and overtaking most of the desert off to the uh, off to the uh, west of you. Uh, to the east of you is, uh, you see, like, a lot of grass, like, a little bit of, like, a little bit of a lake, a little bit of what looks like there's vegetation kind of, like, around the desert. So, if you were to go off the path going towards the east, you would not have too much difficult terrain to walk about, but that does mean there might be other animals nearby. Uh, further out, heading towards the north, where you guys are facing, just a straight path. You can actually see the plateaus all the way off in the distance. The ones that everyone keeps saying that's where they haul off all the criminals. Okay. So you dig are on dig on shutters a little. Yeah, yeah, you are. Unfortunately, the road does look like you're walking towards in that direction, but not to that exact location. But just in its general direction. Yeah, you are. You are walking in its general direction. Uh, with that, you guys take off. Uh, you watch as. Ibra Call kind of disappears from your sight. You can't really miss the Acropolis because it's a giant like tower that pierces into the sky. However, the most the Ring of Mortals is starting to disappear over the dunes as you keep going. The vegetation is starting to disappear around you, and you're starting to feel a little bit of the heat come down on you. But lucky enough for you, because you guys uh, bought those uh, those pieces of clothing, you're actually feeling way more insulated from all like the the shade that it's providing you. So. You can, if you like reach your hand out, you can feel the heat like crisp your fingers, but that's the worst of it. So long as your bare flesh is like touching the sun, you will <laughs> get that sensation. And since we're on camels, we're making better time than we would have on foot. Indeed. Uh, so I am going to roll something real quick. Do, do, do. All right. Wow, okay. All right, Dagon, since you're off in the distance, it's been maybe two hours since you have left. There's no more vegetation nearby. You're pretty much just walking on dunes and the the uh, the pathway you're on kind of like arches up into stairs, sometimes into slopes. But so far, so long as you don't deviate off the path, everything seems to be fine. However, you do see four large birds off in the distance. They're like kind of like converged around the uh, pathway. And sitting on the ostriches or these like bird-like creatures are four riders on each of the birds. They haven't noticed you yet, but they are on the path, like conversing with each other in a circle. All right, if I use my spyglass to try to get a better look at them, um, I guess I'll roll perception for that. Yep. Uh, modified 20. Modified 20? Uh, you're seeing a lot of lizard tails coming out of really large cloaks, but there's also like spiked metal coming off of one side, it's almost like poltroons. Uh, these are kobolds. They're red scales. All right, red scale kobolds. Do I, uh, from uh, being from the area, do I know these as being like raider types or? Out in the desert, uh, I'm just gonna say this. You don't really need to roll for that. But out in the desert, it's anyone's game. They could be friendly. They could be raiders. You don't know, and you haven't been in this area for so long that you don't recognize any of their clothing as some kind of faction that you would know about. Hmm. Might be trouble up ahead. I inform everybody as I collapse my spyglass and set it back in my pouch. Yep, so far, like I said, they have not noticed you. They're all, con like, the four of them, based on what you've seen, they're just, like, in conversation with each other before they move on with whatever they're doing. Yeah, I slow down since they haven't noticed us just to get a consensus of what everybody... 
Well, they haven't seemed to make any motion towards us yet. Oh, well, so. they also haven't noticed us. Or at least they haven't made any signs that they noticed us. You haven't arched over the dune just yet, so that's what's happening. The dune is giving you partial cover. I mean, in in my personal experience, exactly 100% of kobolds are adorable and just the best. <laughs> we have had only positive experiences with kobolds so, How so many far. Have you but, met? I, but I would hate for that record to fall. I mean, really just the one, but... We've had, had like three, I, I want to say. There was the one on the deer island who helped us out. Oh, yeah, he was all right. And I mean, Riss basically counts for two right now, right? Because he's got the dark side and the light side. Yeah, and both sides seem to like us. Yeah. Half side... of me is undead. <laughs> yeah, the, the the dark half never never like shriveled me up or stole my soul or nothing. <laughs> Despite <laughs> having the power to. Yeah, he could have at any time, and he didn't. I'm not going to read into that as much as I could, but... um, Your sword's kind of like, what? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, they're not talking about you. Damn it. I'm sure you could steal my soul anytime you wanted to as well, chick. Um, how many of them are there? He have thinks we... very highly of himself. There are four <laughs> kobolds on four ostrich on four ostriches. Okay. I mean, worst case scenario, they're unfriendly and we get some ostrich meat. It's true. It's the the way I'm looking at it now is I don't want to start a fight where there isn't one, and I feel like at this point just moving forward and being being on the defensive and ready to go should they launch any sort of assault is uh, uh is my plan. While you guys are talking, they're starting to ride towards your general direction. I they have not like... noticed you still yet, but they are walking your way. Well, it looks like it's unavoidable at this point either way, unless you want to get off these camels and maybe set up an ambush just in case they're not friendly. I'm going to take a moment to cast Resistance on myself, just as a precautionary measure. Okay. Uh, that'll give me a plus 1d4 on a saving throw, if one should be called for. Okay. I'm ready to talk my way out of any sort of problem that might show up, and if we have to fight, I kind of like look at our group, realize that I've left a lot of our muscle behind. <laughs> I mean, we shouldn't be in too bad of a place. <laughs> you watch as, like, Frida is adjusting something. She takes out what looks like... It almost looks like a short sword, but it's a really ornate dagger that looks like it snakes into this weird position, and it makes like a little like onk like symbol towards the middle. And she like has like a small grin as she's shifting it like up towards her chest, so it's like a pop when ready at such an uh, situation. Yeah, like concealed weapons like that. We don't need to show them off right away or make any sort of threat, but if they come at us, it's I good assure to know you're ready. what this group may lack in physical bulk. We'll make up for in finesse. I agree. Finally, uh, yep. Uh, I assume you guys aren't trying to hide anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, road. say, my plan we'll would just, just be we'd like, stay we'll our just course. keep moving. Okay, so you walk over the dune. The four kobolds finally notice you. The one in the front kind of like stops, holds his hand up, and blocks the others from stopping. They kind of like form a line off the road, letting you guys pass as you walk up to them. I just give a respectful nod. Hello? Hello, fellow travelers. Ah, good. You speak common. Yes, hi. Hel hello. Ah, uh, I I apologize. I wasn't certain. I, I... I... He, like, looks over to you. Ah, uh, you... You seem per the usual. I, I feel you are safe. Do, w I, if it's all right with you, sir, do you mind if we question and inspect your caravan for quite so for just a moment? Uh... Quick insight. Same. Check on him. Uh, 15 for me. Insight 15? for me <clears throat> is a 14. Uh, these, these folk don't look like they're just raiders. They actually look like they're wearing some kind of formal, like, armored garb on them. They don't, they're, they're not a patrol you've ever seen before. They don't look like any of the sun guard back from the city. Their clothing is to keep them from the sun's heat. However, they they look like they're wearing some kind of house symbol alongside their chest. All right. Uh, in like the least aggressive or like insulting way possible, I basically ask, under whose like whose jurisdiction do you have to to inspect us? Like, oh, have we done something wrong? No, no, you have not done something wrong. We merely just wish to ask you a question. We are in search of someone who has committed a crime. Oh, okay. Cover my face a little bit more. <laughs> like my face is entirely covered. <laughs> Oh. Again, and also it is for your protection as well. If there are any of you who are not denizens or, or or races of those who live out in these sands, you might be putting yourselves in grave danger. I see. I usually am. Oh, you especially, my friend. 
He looks over to he looks over to Eloy. Oh, re really? Why me especially? You seem ripe for the picking for slavers. You know, I got picked up by slavers er early on before I met y'all. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. It was it was no good. I busted right out of there. Well, then. You've yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to run into no more slavers. They was they well, was powerful men. Allow allow me to assure you, we are not saying there are any nearby. We have not seen them in our patrol, but we are in the midst of searching for one who has actually stolen our Lord's son. Oh my goodness! Oh. What's that about? Like, I, I I am suddenly now more concerned than than defensive. Meanwhile, Tell meanwhile, Dagon just heard a ka-ching in his head. <laughs> Well, we we haven't seen him, and if uh, if you need to inspect us to, just to make sure that we're not the kidnappers you're looking for, I'd, I'd be happy to oblige. I just want to make sure that we're we're kind of we're also on a journey. We need to we need to get to we need to get to where we're going. I so understand, I sir, but this can all be made simpler if you just release your hoods, and we may see your faces. Ezra reveals his just fine, like like they no are, they are they are nonplussed about you, and they already have seen you, so they're nonplussed either. Uh, fuck it. <laughs> uh. Oh, an extinguished. Yes, I know. I'm sure, can, I'm sure you can understand why he was trying to uh, keep himself I know. I, I, I can imagine so, but that is not who we are looking for. What is the person you're looking for? Maybe we could keep our eyes open for your lord. What, who is your lord, by the way? Is it Riff? Is Riff is Riff's, is Riff's <clears throat> secret royalty too? Our Lord, I bet he is. Our Lord, our Lord is a red scale dragonborn named Sir Zerl. Nuts! Neither <laughs> of his halves are that color. And his son, aptly named Zerl as well, was taken by a man who calls himself Alramad. Well, you already have a name. They're way ahead of most investigations I've found. He is a rather large uh, fire genasi. He's been wandering the desert calling himself Alramad, which in, in the tongue means ash. It's pretentious, but I be we believe that it is a sort of name used for him to travel into the plateau to sell off, tra uh, to sell off slaves. Only uh, fire genasi we saw was the guy who rented us these camels, but he was just hanging out in the city. I think if he was a wanted man, you'd probably have found him by now. I don't believe he would ever try... I do not believe, sir, with... I do not believe at all that he would ever travel into Eber Call. That would be a suicide mission. I don't know if you want a general intelligence check or an intelligence history check, but either way, it's a 14 if I would have ever heard this name before. and I've been to the plateau. Uh, I'll roll it for you, but I'll see about that. No, this is a completely brand new name to you. Okay. You've never heard of such a name even being from this land, so this must be a new case. Hmm. We can only give you a physical description of what we know. The man is about five feet. He is about maybe six feet tall. Uh, he is he is uh, barely he is wearing a uh, leather garb, uh, and his he has a beard made of blue flame that etches down to his chest. Ooh. And while most weapons do not hurt or... Most weapons of flame that don't hurt or scar this man, he actually does possess a small burn that has been uh, given to him from our lord as he was escaping. The back of his head is completely charred, almost to look like it has received a third-degree burn on a Genasi. Oh, man. Your lord must be a must be a real fighter if he could burn a guy what's made of fire? That's, that does, that's amazing. That does seem pretty intense. Though our lord is not exactly a fighter, as you would say, a dragonborn's flame, once produced, can be very potent. I can only imagine. I can as well. He lifts up his head and half his face is completely charred. Oh, but, oh, he did, did he do that to you? Indeed. Wh why? Probably because they tried to stop him, I'm guessing? Insubordinates. Ah, no, that to do it too. They're very I was a very brand, about this. I was very brand new to the regiment when our lord inflicted some discipline upon me, and ever since then I have taken him serious. Seems like a, uh, a rigid <laughs> group you uh, that you follow. But none of us have heard anything about this, but I will be sure to keep an, 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 our ears to the ground should we hear anything and uh, try to help you if we can. Indeed. If you have any other information, if you do not see us or anyone else of our clad, 
we would be, if if we, if I don't ask, where are you headed? Uh, we are headed for Furfos. Ah, uh, yes. Our Lord is actually on the seat of the council for the for the Neris. Oh, well. If that... you have any information, right now I'm sure our Lord is head over heels to find any good news. Well, I'll do well. our we'll do our best to to listen for something because honestly we could probably use all the favors we can get out in this land since we're strangers here. So. Good or ill, you'll receive whatever news we find. Thank you, sir. I assume there's reward for such information? We can reward you, yes. Very well. I am very certain my lord will grant some sort of monetization for your efforts. I like the way you think, Dagon. I like the way I think, too. It keeps me around. <laughs> but as we have said, keep your uh, eyes open and your ears to the ground. Even though we are seeking Alramad, there's plenty of others around here who would aside from you sir, the rest of your group look like they're easy pickings for the Scorpion Queen. Mm. Is that a name that rings a bell at all? Yeah, I was that is say. brand new to you. I was well. going to say, Ezra would immediately have a follow-up question. Who's the Scorpion Queen? <laughs> so so is many that... things change around here. I just wrap my I'm wrapping my face yeah. back up. So do you, uh, do you actually want to interject and ask yes. him that? Who is the Scorpion Queen? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Scorpion Queen? That sounds dangerous, says Ezra. Indeed. There is a there is a uh, drow of the Underdark of the Plateau who has been gaining renown as of late. She has been building some sort of an empire, and she has been where most of the slaves have been going. We, we dare not travel inside, for it is her territory. To march some kind of scale into the plateau would be something only the Sun Guard would be able to take care of. Not four lowly kobolds and a few f sphinxes and some Sun Guard off in Furfos. Well, we'll try to we'll try to keep uh, keep abreast of this Scorpion Queen. Sounds like one rough customer and uh, not someone I'd want to bump into. Indeed, there is one other rumor we can offer you, sir. We do not know much of who the Scorpion Queen is but we have heard tales of a woman with a creature from out in the grand blue. That is what we have been known to call it. We're not very familiar with the ocean, as it was called. It was, it was either that or the sky. <laughs> that she, she, she wears a witch's garb of dark blue and carries with her a wrinkly serpent-like creature. Does she has that been, ring a bell? She has been, see, uh, roll, actually all three of you Roll, Ezra. And this sounds very specifically like somebody that's been mentioned in the campaign before. Yep. <laughs> Nat twenty. Nat twenty. All right. Well, you've got it. Uh, I had an eighteen. Seventeen. All three of you could actually know this, based on what Mead and everyone else in the pirates have told you. That's Lady Siren, one of the pirate lords. And bleh. Yep. And that wrinkly serpent sounds like a moray eel. Her familiar bleh. What is a pirate lord doing out in the desert, especially one with a, well, an eel for a pet? Well, as as he was uh, continuing to say, from what we've heard of rumor of this woman, she has been seeking an audience with the Scorpion Queen as well. Oh, that would do it. Well, we have taken enough of your time. Best luck, best of luck in your travels. And again, if you have any information, if you see us or our lord within the walls of Furfos, please deliver any news you find. Uh, Ezra does a very courteous bow and just like, thank you for all the information you've given us. And absolutely, if we if we hear anything, I'll I'll be sure to try and find you guys and let you know. They bow their heads and they uh, march off uh, from the opposite direction you guys came from. You know, for a dangerous desert, we've been finding some nice people along the way. I wonder what those birds taste like. I never know. Birds? The ostriches. <laughs> oh, like Dagon's just wandering <laughs> out, uh, wondering out loud. Speaking of bird. I'm gonna roll something. Nope. Uh, Frida kind of like looks off into the distance, but then shrugs it off and puts her hood back on. And you guys continue onward? Yes. Onward to Furfos. Alrighty. Onward, meet. Oh my god, why am I calling you that? <laughs> oh, you are not in. Yes, oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, at this point, I need you guys to roll me a survival check. 10. Uh, sorry, couldn't tell if it was a 13 or an 18. That is a 14. 22. 22? Let me roll four, 
Rita, she gets a nice. She gets a nat twenty. Uh, Ezra, the sun has been beating down on you very hard, in particular out of everyone else, that you actually have to stop. <sighs> Hold on, just a sec. It's a little hot out here. <sighs> uh, you take some time. Drink some of your water. Yes, you will have to. Tra- you all have to drink some of your water. But due to the fact that you have rolled a little bit too poor on this roll, you have drank half of your canteen. Okay. For everyone else, it would be a wise idea to take a sip of water. However, you will only take one sip of it, which means you have three more uh, shots of water, whereas Ezra only has two now. I still have my alchemy, Chuck. (laughs) If I need to. Alrighty, with that, I'm going to roll something. Maybe that magic water skin wasn't such a bad idea after all now. (laughs) I still don't know if I would have trusted that salesman. I feel like you... Found some dopes to rope along with us. <laughs> <laughs> Another two hours have passed. The sun is still pretty much high in the sky at this point. You actually have been chased behind by a few buzzards who are trying to scavenge some food, thinking that you are poor saps just out, on, out and about. After a while, they kind of just like left you alone, seeing like, oh, okay, everything's fine. Like They're not going to die anytime soon. Uh, so they think. They're, they're not <laughs> dying yet. There is... One buzzard that is still following you, though, however. He is, like, sitting off on a cactus and just, like, watching you guys intently. It's the same buzzard, because you can tell, because, like, one of his jowls kind of, like, lurched down all the way to his chest, while the other one's hanging a little bit on it, on the right side of his beak. Yes, I have a bad feeling about that one, too, Chick. I'm going to name him Jowly. Uh, I do a bit of animal handling to try and scare it off. Nine. Boo. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Get out of here! Come on! Go! We're not gonna die! Like, pecks at his wing and just sits there and looks at you. <laughs> it's, the, it's the deep mental. I'm, I'm in his mind now. Now he knows. Is he making fun of me? Let him believe it, chick. Let him believe it. Come on, I don't got all day. Did we actually hear that? Yes. Okay. I'm gonna perception, see if I can pick up where it came from. Sure. Also not great. Nine. <laughs> uh, modified 20 on perception. This desert's 21. really fucking Ezra up. <laughs> yeah. It, it, you're just like, ah, oh, great. Ah, this is one of those... This now the is bird's one of those, talking to me. This is one of those mirages I hear about. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a mirage. The bird said that without yeah. moving its li- its beak. Can you... Was that you, Jowly? Call me that again and see what happens. You, no, you not say cold. that like you don't want me to do it. I, I'm saying that like I want you to keel over and die so I can eat something. First, dear sir, we can't call two animals meat. <laughs> what is your name? I don't have a name. I'm just hungry. <laughs> okay, Dude. fine. We can call this one meat. <laughs> Dude. Oh my god, stop talking and die! This bird is just sitting there calmly and this voice is coming out of it. We, we have a job to do, so we're going to yeah, try and yeah, do that Yeah, yeah, and first. my stomach's empty, and there's a giant on the way here, so if you kindly would go talk to him so he can scoop you up, and then after he poops you out, I can probably eat you. Can you please do that? Pulls out spyglass. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on you. Now that we know there's a giant, we are slightly less likely to die from it. Oh, I sincerely doubt that. So if you would all just, like, sit here, play dead, and let him just carry you off, that'd be great. Eight, 18 to find this giant with my spyglass. It's not a giant, but it is a very large humanoid kind of, like, lumbering off of the distance. You see a mirage of a silhouette of a creature slung, with something slung over its shoulder just meandering its way towards you. They brought a cave troll. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably friendly. It's not coming from the road, by the way. It's coming off to the uh, east. Well, if we keep moving, maybe we can just stay out of its path and not have to deal with it. Honestly, we're mounted. I don't think we'll have trouble. Hey! Out. Over here! Oh my fuck, I shoot the bird. (laughs) (laughs) With a 19 to hit. All right. You watch. Oh, do I not hit? No, no, no. Okay. You, your shot aims true. (laughs) Which only just made a lot more noise as the bird kind of just like looks at you and you watch as a rock is lifted off the floor and takes the shot for him. That is a fancy trick. Hmm. How did you manage shoot him with the other gun? <laughs> <laughs> nat 20! He also got a nat 20. Mother! Wait, what's he rolling against me? <laughs> How is he rolling against it to hit? 
He's using his wisdom to pick up these rocks. <laughs> still, though, does that raise his AC? I, uh, whatever. Well, you can still roll the hit. That's fine. I mean, I got the nat 20. Yeah, you got the nat 20, so you can roll the damage. Okay. Luckily, it's a crit. <laughs> uh, that is four plus dex mod seven. You do nick this thing. Cool. You hit, it, you hit it in the leg, but it still kind of like just flaps its wings and like goes up into the sky, and now you have it circling around. Finally, food time is here! All right, we should probably gallop. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh... You guys are feeling a visible stomping as the as the giant is now, or the giant or whatever this creature is is coming to you is closer. Uh, you can get a better uh, close to this thing as it's now taking a running speed towards you. All right, Great. Um, well, these... What's the camel's top speed? I'm guessing it's the same as a horse. Yeah. But I don't know what that is either. 60. Okay. 60 at run. On, on walk, it's 40. All right. Uh, I'm going to... And right. just start galloping down the road. Yeah, I, I start galloping as well, but I, I purposely try to fall into the back of the pack. Like okay. I, I'm just going to be like, Eloy, uh, Frida, you two ahead of me. All right. Frida does so. All right. I'm going to... How far away is the giant at this point? Uh, you would have to roll a perception check for that, and at this point, the buzzard is still following you, screaming, Hey, they're over here! <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to continue galloping forward with these guys, but I'm going to try and eyeball how close the giant is with a 25 perception. Uh, it's a couple of dunes away, but it looks like it's actually gaining speed. As you look over, it has a giant net slung over it. It's not a it's not a giant. It's actually an ogre. Okay. It's a it's a giant, really, really rotund ogre, as he has slung over his back a net, and in those net looks like giant scorpions. Hmm. Are they not stinging him or are they dead? Some are kind of half dead, some are kind of moving. It's kinda of hard because he's jiggling around, so you I don't gotcha. know if at, uh, from, either way, either way, I'm like, either way, I'm taking this time to reload my yep. pistols while I'm riding. As it as it's as it looks right now, it literally looks like they're dead. But that's only because he's moving around. He's yeah. trying to catch up. I'm going to ready an action. As soon as this thing closes within 30 feet, which is the maximum range, I'm going to cast a suggestion at it. Alrighty. And and suggest that it is way too hot for this shit, and he should just go off, find a shady spot, and take a nap. Go eat them scorpions. Yeah. As we're still running, but just in the back of the pack, just trying to observe how close this thing gets. How close to us is the bird? Uh, the bird is keeping 60 feet up in the air and 20 feet behind you. Awesome. Um, I just look over. Hey, Chick, want to take care of a feathered friend? And uh, Chick is just going to like turn his little mouth pillion and fire an Eldritch Blast at it. Alrighty. Uh, what do I got to roll for that? Uh, that is not a that is, that is a uh, attack roll for me. Okay. A ranged spell attack. Blast is plus eight to hit. That is a modified 20. That will hit. Okay. And Eldritch Blast does 1d10 force damage. Eight. That's, uh, that might be 2d10 by now. Oh, yeah, actually, yeah, it fires two beams. You're right. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, two beams. I do have to roll for each beam, though. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, one for the first beam. Uh, second, oh, it's also a modified 21 for the second one. Second one is... Five damage. That's thirteen damage as two beams just fire from Chick's mouth straight at this bird. Oh. They do hit the bird. You are get you are you are doing damage because it's kind of like like flop, floundering around the sky, but it actually still does look like it's still flying about. But he, now he's backing off. He's just like, to fuck right. this. <laughs> yeah, no, no. He's like, he he's still food's over there, but it hurts. Yeah, no. He he's like keeping his he's keeping a far distance. He's just like whatever, man. So long as I get something out of this food wise, and he kind of like backs he backs off. He knows he's taking a little bit of damage. You you did nick him for like for like eight points of damage. Yeah, I'm guessing he flies or is trying to get out of my range. Yeah. So I'm not going to say what that range is, but mm -hmm. yeah. But at this point, he's he's content with shutting up. But now he just wants to watch and see what happens. He's like he's done his job, so now he's just waiting. Uh, with that, the ogre finally catches up to you guys. It actually is large enough that it will, it's in front of you. It's to the northeast of you. You're walking. You're you're galloping towards it, but it's. Got like okay, so it can like catch up on you guys. Okay, so it was turn. it was coming in at a different angle, so it was going to intercept if we were staying on our same path. Yeah, okay. 
it's following the road pretty much at this point. Okay. So it's going to be in front of us, which throws off my plan. You are not 30 feet from it. You are 60 feet at this point. All right. Uh, but you, like I said, you are galloping towards it, and it is heading towards the road and now totally notices you guys. Uh, you, you, got, you guys watch it like as he just looks over at you, licks his lips and rubs his stomach. Can I ready hand. my crossbow while I'm riding a camel? I actually don't know how... Uh, mounted animal. combat is Mount, yeah. interesting. Yeah, how mounted combat mounted works. Mounted combat... Uh, while you're moving, it would take disadvantage. Oh, okay. Unless you had a feat for it. Gotcha, which I do not. All right, well, I am going to pull out Chick. <laughs> Just ready to go. I... Because I'm at the front of the pack. All right, are you guys actually going to initiate combat? Because that'll be initiative rolls. I mean, if we have to, if this thing's going yeah, to attack gonna, us. I was going to say, my, my plan is going to be to try and just run past it and be like, all right, just stay, stay the course and just, he probably can't catch up if we're going full blast on these camels. And uh, Eloy's running at full speed. I'm, go I'm going to have to say you guys have to roll initiative at this all point. Right. That's fine. One second, I'm looking up one of my spells. Awesome. And I guess, Eloy, your run speed is not quite as fast as these camels, so yeah. we might have been leaving you behind now that I think about it. Kind of, yeah. Um, well, I got a nat 20 on initiative for a total of 24. Well, I got you're a, up on the top. Yeah, I got a modified 20 on initiative. Uh, I got a modified 20 as well. Hey. Modified 20. And you're, right, I, I think, oh, you're, uh, yeah, both dexterity. of our decks is the same, I think. So decide amongst yourselves who wants to take the first hit. I will let you take it since you are up front. Right, yeah, so I'm, a, I'm ahead of the pack, so that makes some sense. Eloy, Wake, Ezra. Excuse me, who? Quit. Right, <laughs> shit, <laughs> fuck. I'm sorry, I'm so used to writing W's on this no, fucking I sheet. <laughs> I thought he was coming up behind us. My plan was going to be to drop ball bearings on him once he got to a certain distance. But I'm not sure how well those will work in yeah, sand. Yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I wasn't yeah. sure either. That's why I was kind of like, as you were setting something, I was like, yeah. I'm going to hold off. Because <laughs> it sounds like he's got something going. Frida, and then finally... Giant or ogre. Ogre is actually going to go in between Dagon and Ezra. Oh wow! Okay. Inter oh, he got a modified twenty-two. Interesting. Radius. All right. So Eloy, you're up first. You are twenty feet behind everyone else as they are still running. Okay. And you said I was like sixty feet from the giant. Yes. Okay. So that that will let me close to within thirty feet, which I will do. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and cast Suggestion on him. He gets a Wisdom save versus uh, DC 15. All right. And what exactly is the command? Uh, the command is, it is too hot for this shit. I should just go find a shady spot and take a, take a mid-afternoon nap. All right. So what do I have to roll against this? Uh, wisdom save. Wisdom save. This is one smart fucking ogre. Yeah. Because <laughs> I rolled a 15. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll save. The, the ogre kind of contemplates, like, oh, oh, oh man, this, oh, wait, ooh, oh, <laughs> oh. The thought of, man, all it's hot, right. I, should, I should quit. Then the thought of, but I already ran all this way. <laughs> but I already ran all this way, and they're coming towards me. <laughs> well, that was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, do you do anything else? Uh, that's pretty much all I can do. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, all right, Dagon, what do you do? Uh, Dagon's going to yell, Right around him! Chick, put him in the hole! And I, con and I cast Hunger of Hadar on him. What does that do for the audience at home? Hunger of Hadar. A 20-foot radius sphere appears. No light can illuminate this area. The area is considered difficult terrain. Any creature that starts in this area takes 2d6 cold damage, and any creature that ends its turn must make a dex save versus 2d6 acid damage as basically an astral plane of pure madness and monstrosity starts devouring, and all you can hear from, like, emanating from within is the sound of sloppy, chewing wetness. Basically, it sounds like a bunch of hairy old homeless people eating chili. Mm. I don't know why homeless people, it's just the image that comes to my mind, just people scooping up beans and gumming it. Is that a full Gorbinth? Did you just do a full Gorbinth on that man? No fucking clue! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just 
inordinately proud of myself whenever I remember the name of one of the gods. I am proud of yeah. you as well, Eloy. I, I, am, go, I am going to, in the, in the, in the sky. to uh, put this into perspective. The distance I'm going to have will be uh, 10, like, there will be 10 feet behind him mm-hmm. and 30 feet between us and him, and we just have to go around him. Okay. So we're going around this bubble, and I just continue charging around and past it All while right. this thing is inside and so confused. So I, I have to roll a what against this? Uh, nothing. Just at the start of his turn, he takes 2d6, and if he ends his turn in this bubble, if he can figure out which way he has to go, and again, it is difficult terrain to leave it, uh, he takes 2d6 acid damage. That's a dex save. So since he's effectively starting his turn as I am riding around him. Yes. I will roll the 2d6 cold damage. Wow, max 12. Hey. 12? Nice. Okay. It's real chilly for him. It was too hot. <laughs> yeah, he's just surrounded by the sounds of... Oh, gross! Yes. <laughs> uh, his scorpions also take that damage. Yes. Okay. Sorry, just getting math and done. I'm, yeah, and I'm currently curving my way around this bubble so that we aren't going through the difficult terrain. I'm, I'm sure my sound effects played very well to the crap. <laughs> <laughs> the ASMR of madness. All right, so yeah, he does take that damage. Uh, he he turns around and... Notices- I can't see him, so whatever he's doing is... Yeah, yeah. Well, he noticed. He now notices that this sloppy, chilly sound going behind him, and there's a fucking portal of madness looking at him. He's also getting wiped with like weird, floppy tentacles. Yeah, and it's like it's creating gangrene on his flesh. <laughs> what he? I'm gonna roll something to see if he actually. Yeah, see which it. way he knows where to go. Whichever way he knows to go is the way to get the fuck out of the way, and unfortunately that means that he just completely is now gunning towards you guys. Uh, that means he has to run 30 feet in difficult terrain. Indeed. Uh, but since he's a large creature, that's... He, yeah, I, I don't know what his move speed is, so... Yeah. yeah. That, that, that does cut him in half so long as he's in there, but he does have enough wiggle room to actually get out with enough to be like, oh, okay, now I have, like, this much amount to move at to get out of here. Okay, so at a dash, you'd be able to do that, I guess? Uh, yes, he dashes to get in front of you guys. Okay, Dagon is off to the side of the bubble at this point, yep, you so are, I can't you are, see him. You are, behi- you are now effectively behind him. He didn't pay you any mind at this point, but now he's standing so in front of you guys. you past, and you were, there was enough distance between yeah. him and But me you do that- now notice that, like... As like the slapping like sound is like attacking, and you watch as the gangrene's now frosting over some of the scorpions. Some of them inside start to jitter and become alive again right. as they take that damage. So we're just to get this clear in my head. So Dagon's dashed ahead. The ogre is now between us and Dagon yes. outside the. Okay. Yes. Yeah. He's, yeah. I'm, I'm around the side. He did not. Of the he did not actually take an attack because he had to dash out of the difficult terrain. Gotcha. Okay. That's fine. Just just so making now, sure. So I'm now clear. you guys have him in a sort of murder sandwich. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Ezra, it is now your turn. You are okay. now smack dab in front of this boy. You're just yeah, you're just riding. Okay, I'll go right. Oh, fuck. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how dumb do I want this to get right out of the gate? Um, okay. Uh... This seems like it's going to go all directions and wrong, but I'm going to try it anyway. So Red gave me that staff of fireball, was it? Yep. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Out of the refrigerator, into the frying pan. <laughs> exactly. We've, we've cold him off. Now we're going to heat that metal back up. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Ezra, with I'm going to go ahead and just admittedly very little magic experience. <laughs> <laughs> to activate it. Uh, this will require you to roll a dex check to throw the magic at him. Okay. Then I will go ahead and uh, ready that and do that. So just a straight dex check? Yes. Okay. Not great. Eight. Eight? <laughs> Can I okay. see sheet real quick? Yeah. Just yeah cause it, I thought I gave you the stats for that. Didn't I? Or am I crazy? Did I not have that one written uh, down? Staff of Fireball should just be casting the spell of Fireball, right? Yeah, 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 because then you're casting the Fireball at him. And, and he needs to make a dex save, yeah. which is under red stats, yes. the save DC. Yeah. That, that's okay. why I had it written down here. I'm just like, wait a minute. 
All right, yeah. So whatever red save DC is, and I'm pretty sure you said it was like a 14 or a 15. No, it was a 16. 16. Wow, right. that's pretty damn good. Yeah, so he has to roll to save that. And he fails miserably. Hell yeah! So yeah. roll that damage. Boom. Uh, I don't remember where I wrote down that. I think uh, damage for it. Fireball damage should be like 8D... Something D6. I'll double check for you. Yes, if you could, please. That down now. So 8d6, yeah. Yep, that's it. Just got it. Now, would that count under your cunning action? Would you be able to do that as a bonus action? Would that is using, using an, an object. I it would. Know. It would count as that. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> But you have used it for one day, so yeah, after 24 hours, yeah. you can't use that again. Yeah, but you could still potentially take another action this turn. Yeah. All right, and with 8d6, Jesus Christ, now I see why people talk up this spell. No, fireball, uh, fireball is, like, right. dumb. Yeah, and, and that's an AoE, too. <laughs> 10. Doesn't take effect here, but... 9. I mean, it takes effects on the scorpions. Yeah, that's it true. It does, yeah. That's true. They can't save. They're in a net. They're restrained, all things considered, at this point. And 26 altogether. 26. Very nice hit. Very, very nice hit. The last the, the last pair of D6 were both ones, but everything before that was really high. <laughs> you hear the chittering and screaming from the net as all the scorpions are now flailing around, throwing their, their uh, stingers about. You pretty much woke up most of what was in that net. You and can't set it on fire. And set, and now the net is set on fire, and this boy is also set on fire. However, he doesn't seem too jazzed by all this. Not in the sense of, oh, gee, I'm on fire now, but just like, huh. Um, well, at least it's not that sloppy chili sound. Yeah, it's not the <laughs> sloppy chili sound. It looks like he took some resistance to fire. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of figured he would, being a desert creature, but... Do you wish to keep this as a cunning action? Yes, there's okay. no reason not to, really. Um, I'm going to, uh, for my movement, though. Uh, you are, you, I'm, I'm going to say this since you are on the yeah. camel and it kind of, like, you don't have, like, mounted combat. Right. I'm going to say it's going to take an animal handle check just to, like, circumvent this just creature. To, okay, yeah, because that was, that was going to be what I was going to ask. Could I, like, try and move my if you, camel if you do, out of its direct yeah, if contact? Yeah, if you do want to move your camel... Uh, you're going to have to roll an animal handle on this. All right, then I think I'm going to do that because I'm fine with getting that blast in and then just trying to run past. <sighs> I will, however, I will be nice and say this. You will invoke attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, seven was my animal handling. Animal handling. Roll for camel. Always Cam roll for camel. Camel is... Caminal handling. Ca yeah. Camel is spookified, <laughs> and he just stops cold. He doesn't move anywhere. Oh, good. <laughs> just went with the one option worse than running straight into it, stopping right in front of it. Good. Yeah, you, he, like, <laughs> cool. he, like, rears up. So roll me a quick deck save to stay on board. Uh, 19. 19. Oh, wait, deck save? Yeah, well, uh, deck save. Okay, then 22. Yeah, you're fine. You... you Staying on the camel's not the problem. The problem is now the camel is so scared he stopped. Yeah. All right. Uh, I will say that I will be nice to say that does not take up your actual. That doesn't action. take my action. Cool. Um, if that's the case, uh, I am right there. <laughs> <laughs> you can abandon the camel. <laughs> uh, thinking about it. <laughs> not gonna lie. Uh. You can always ride old Eloy the rest of the way. <laughs> okay, all right. This you is still <laughs> have Eloy. But you all still have Eloy. <laughs> this this might not work at all, considering I don't know where the sun is right now. Uh, it's past noon, so it's probably getting. Let's see. It's probably you said it's probably about four o'clock. It's been four o'clock in the hours. at this point. So, so the sun is still shining. Yeah, it's still bright. It's in, out. it's in the sky. Yeah. It's still there. Okay. Uh, with my mirror card, I take. I try to get the sun right in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were the right person to give that to. <laughs> Roll me a sleight of hand. Hell yeah, that's one of my best tests. Uh, twenty-five. All right. Let me roll a wisdom save for this boy. Oh! 
<laughs> <laughs> he gets real cold and he's in a dark place. Then he gets set on fire and the sun's in his eyes. His day is bad. All of his scorpions are cooked. <laughs> All of this immediately after thinking, is it too hot to do this? Nah, I can <laughs> stay the course. You're here. <laughs> Just a blinding flash of light in his face. <laughs> I'm glad this is my saved action. <laughs> but all right. Uh, okay, I, I, I'm assuming I can't move anymore since my camel has decided to stop, and that would be my action is mm -hmm. shining the sun in his eye, so that's my turn. All right, it's well. Frida's turn. Yep. yep, Frida's turn. Eloy, you watch as Frida stands up on top of her camel and fades away into nothingness. Oh, neat. You guys watch as the, you, Dagon, now watch as what looks like an ethereal flock of crows kind of like converges behind the creature just above where its neck is. And Frida comes down with her short sword screaming. <laughs> Fucking Itachi up in here. <laughs> and with well, a flank all right. With a flank <laughs> bonus. Fun fact, a group of crows is called a murder. Yep. <laughs> She, she, she wasn't attacking this thing. She was using the sword to latch onto it, and she places her hand on the back of its head and casts Ray of Enfeeblement. Huh? That's this thing takes disadvantages hit. on every strength check from now until the end of combat, unless it gets a dex save. All right. Don't know why, but for a second I thought you were saying, from now until the end of time. <laughs> <laughs> forever, he, forever he feels feeble. All right, so... Now, so uh, she's standing on that bag of scorpions, or no, she's not. She okay. she latched on, casted the spell, and then jumped off. Okay. Also, that bag is on fire. <laughs> yeah, like she was not. She was not staying around with that mess, especially with the tails flying around, going. Eh, eh, eh. Hopefully, she avoids the bubble. <laughs> yep. Uh, however, her jumping away from that will invoke an attack of opportunity up for one of the scorpions. But it does add ray of enfeeblement on all the scorpions as well. Wow. Mm. It's a it's a cone, man. Okay. Nice. It's a cone attack. Nice. Raven Feeblement is a great fucking spell. I didn't realize it was a cone. Well, it is a ray. <laughs> uh, hold on, let me just calculate the damage real quick. Do 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 do. In a comedy of errors, Ezra holds up his mirror card, trying to blind the ogre, just as Frida appears into meat space, <laughs> getting blinded. <laughs> um, No, she dodges. The tail slaps at her, and she dodges nimbly out of the way as she's falling down behind it. With you standing in front of it, Ezra, and her standing behind it, you both get flank. Okay. And we are back up the list. That, that would make it me... Okay, so it's we now have it pincered with me and Ezra on one side and Dagon and Frida on the other. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Heads up, guys! I'm sending him your way! Dissonant whispers on this boy. He gets a wisdom save. Oh, that would send him right back into the bubble of sloshing madness. <laughs> well, he it will not force him to retreat into obvious danger. It means he just has to flee away from you. Gotcha. Yeah, away from me, which would take him towards you, hence attacks of opportunity. Indeed. Uh, but let's see if it works. Uh, wisdom save versus DC 15. You are, and you are 10 feet away from him, so you don't get it. As long as he walks backwards, you'll get the attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, what was the thing? Uh, wisdom save versus DC 15. Wisdom save. With a negative on his wisdom save, he gets a 14. Sweet. All right. So first off, he takes... Spooky song. <laughs> <laughs> so he... Oh, holy poor crap. boy. Uh, 17 psychic damage. Coming in for a free Fucking meal. Christ, guys. Not. Yeah, that was a real good damage roll. And now he's forced to immediately retreat directly away from me, hence directly towards Frida and Dagon. On his turn, he will do so. Uh, actually, like immediately. immediately. Oh, it's immediately. Yeah, yeah. It's as a reaction. A reaction. Yeah. As a reaction. Okay, as a reaction. So it also I like his... how his one action so far has been, get me out of here. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, which means he all, that also does use up his reaction, so he can no longer make... I made, I made <laughs> yeah. sure this encounter was cathartic for you guys <laughs> in some way. He's on fire <laughs> as he walks He's out of a wet dark from room. All the, from the meat slosh. He's like, oh! He enters the dark, scary... That sound has not stopped, by the way. It's just... <laughs> yeah, it's still going on over there. 
All right, uh, so he took his damage. He will, he looks over at you finally blind, he like blinded, he looks at you, Manticore, no! <laughs> <laughs> he like just like, he just like curly Joe's on one foot and tries to turn and run away. <laughs> you, uh, you and Frida get attacks of opportunity. All right. Uh, hey, you know what? We've tried every other element on this asshole. <laughs> I don't know how this will work, but I have my shock dagger. Hey. <laughs> Uh, can I swing that from Campbell back? Is that how this works? Uh, so long as you're right next to him, you can. I mean, you are in front of him. You are, yeah. yeah, oh yeah, so he's going, so he's going to be going. Uh, However, I am going to require a certain roll from uh, Dagon and Frida after this attack. Okay. Okay. Because he is a large boy and him running towards you. Uh-oh. <laughs> that is also, yeah, a big barreling mass. Yeah. yeah. Dagon hasn't had his reaction yet, so. Oh yeah, no, I know. Hey, that one doesn't happen. <laughs> ah, tink. Ah, oh, shit. I gotta roll severity. Yeah. No, <laughs> I've I've got this electrical lockpick dagger that I'm like, yeah! <laughs> and uh, I miss very poorly. Apparently, you might have hit your camel. Well, all right. You know, I thought about abandoning this camel. Oh! If uh, if it becomes <laughs> if it becomes a casualty of war, so be it. Oh. I'm gonna be a real, real sad if I lose this shock dagger lockpick that I haven't gotten to use for its intended purpose yet. <laughs> but that's what the severity okay, roll is. Okay, after some debating in my head, I have come up with a scenario for this. Okay. <gasps> you throw it All accidentally. Right. It it starts careening its way towards Eloy. A dimensional portal opens up. It hits Wake. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Wake somewhere touches something and is statically shocked. Eloy knowing see, Eloy sees Zetra. it coming his way. Oh no! You lurch up. Oh no! It hits your hoof and ricochets off it. Wait, so did I throw it? You threw it backwards. Okay. It ricochets off of one of Eloy's reared up hooves. It flies up in the air, lands down, and cuts the rope, releasing the scorpions. All right, I'll allow that. <laughs> I say as a player. <laughs> Okay, great. <laughs> to be need... fair, that net was already on fire. Those scorpions were getting out soon one way or now another. Now I need to roll for initiative for the scorpions. I'm surprised any of them are still alive. Nat yeah. one for one scorpion. These are really hardy scorpions. I guess. And they don't give a shit I mean, about... they might resist fire. That would be the only thing I could see after all that yes. fire damage. Yeah, they, they're out in the middle they of the They live in the desert. desert. Fire is probably not that big of a scare to them. Well, heat maybe, but fire is another <laughs> element entirely. It's just a lot of heat. Yeah. <laughs> All right, four scorpions have been released. Uh, Frida will now take an attack of opportunity on the giant as he tries to run away. Four scorpions than seven years ago. I was mm. just going to say the desert burg address. Unfortunately, <laughs> she she runs her long sword against his ankle, but it like bounces off because he's just too thick. Extra. Uh, yep. Uh, so I need to now roll for her to dodge out of the way because this thing's about to step on her. She does so with no problem with a, de with a nice dex check. Uh, Dagon, you can now take an attack of opportunity, but then also afterwards I need you to roll a dex save to get out of the way. Can I do the acrobatics check first? Because I'm going to try to leap off the camel and slice it as it's going under me. I will allow one action as a reaction and nothing more. So, so either you can, leaping. You can either jump, jump off the camel or attack it as well, a reaction. I have to attack it. I just thought, you know, do some flavor for it, but... Well, I suppose that would count as a dismount if you're exactly. Yes. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, that is like like you said, dude. Mounted combat's <laughs> fucking weird for those who don't have mounted combat. Yeah, I, I, it's one of those things that I never really looked into. Uh, chick is a plus nine. That is a twenty-five to hit. That will absolutely hit. Whew. All right. And as a creature who can act as a mount, I've looked into it, and it's kind of not great unless you build your entire build around it. Yeah, I have not done all of my fun stuff, but I still get all, I still get a bunch of cool shit just for hitting him with Chick. So, first of all, it's 1d8 plus my charisma, plus my charisma again, plus, I don't know, man, that's just being Yeah, I was gonna say, twice. what attack is this? Uh, it's just attacking with Chick with my, you know, uh, chosen weapon. Right, right. So, D8. just for the, I was saying for the folks at home, I wanted to 
keeping yeah. track of these yeah, bonuses. Yeah, yeah. Basically, I just do like my charisma twice because that's my attack modifier, and then I took the ability known as where is it? Ah, Life Drinker, which also after attacking with packed weapon, deal charisma as necrotic damage. Right. So he takes. Hexblades so, are stupid. They are. Is the, uh, <laughs> yeah, is the, take, so is the real takeaway. He takes 12 <laughs> slashing damage that's magical for sake of damage reduction. Okay. And then an additional 5 necrotic damage. So that's 17 damage total. Very nice. And you guys are doing some very substantial damage on this thing. I and now I need to make a dex check to get out of its way or an aim? Yes. Okay. Dex check is a. or dex save? Or is yes, it, dex save. Okay. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm not proficient in that anyway. 15. Oh, camel's gone. <laughs> yeah, I gotta roll that stomp damage now. It's tall enough to stomp on me while I am on a camel? Holy shit. It's a big ogre. That's why the guy thought it was and, uh, a giant. Thanks, thanks to the contribution of one of, our, uh, one of our many fans, I get to use these dice. Awesome. Ooh. Camels are like seven feet tall to begin with. Skills are new friends or something. Wow, he rolled. Together. I rolled three threes and a two. Ooh. Including his strength bonus, though. However, due to Frida's ray of enfeeblement, I have to roll something. <laughs> How is weak he does he feel? Enough to, is he strong enough to push Indeed. the camel? I have to actually. I actually have to roll that di the disadvantage. I have this to roll this deck save to get out of it. In a cruel twist of fate, somehow you ended up stepping on yeah, him, Yeah, no, he, you watch as he comes down, his foot comes down on top of you. <laughs> you hold up Chick, and he steps on it. Ah! <laughs> Take that. <laughs> <laughs> and he moves away uh, another 40 feet. So do I take any damage from that? Nope, you do not. Oh, okay. That was a save. <laughs> so which way did he go 40 feet? He went uh he went north uh west. Okay, so past me. Yes. Okay. He's not he's he doesn't look like he doesn't want to get into this fight now that he notices Muscorp You You <laughs> Spooky Donkey <laughs> Wait a minute, you're not a Manticore <laughs> I'm a spooky donkey. I'm a spunky. Alright, Ezra, you're up. Spunky. Right. There are now There's four, your pen name. There are now four <laughs> scorpions sitting in front of you that are like prone. They're not standing up now, they're all prone. They're all chirping and like slashing their pincers and tail around, like trying to get themselves back up. Uh, okay, and then that makes it my move because it was Dagon. So uh, actually, I haven't had my. move Oh wait, yet? that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. right. Reac I apologize. That was all my, reactionary. Yeah, I apologize. Mistake. Dagon, you're up. All right, if he is forty feet ahead of me, uh, the camel you said moves at sixty. Yes, on a dash. Oh, that's a dash. So. What's its base speed? 40. And wouldn't its dash be 80? That's actually fair, yes, you're right, I apologize. All right, so, yeah, I can catch up to it with the camel. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I said base speed was 40, running was 60, 80 is dash. Okay. All right. Checking what I got here. Yeah, I'm gonna catch up to it and slash it with Chick again. Okay. Just with the camel's base speed. Yep, you can catch up. All right, and you want me to roll at disadvantage for attacks because uh, mounted? Or? No, that would that would be for ranged attacks. Oh, uh, okay. If you're going up to this thing and hitting it, that's a little silly. Okay. Then, yeah, I ride up to it, and that is a 18 to hit. 18 to hit? Yes. All right, 18 to hit with attack one. Eight plus five is 13, plus additional five is 18, five of which is necrotic. And then my second slash, because I have Thirsting Blade, which gives me an additional attack, does a, yeah, 21 will hit. Yeah, that'll hit. And the second sword slash, five, 10, 15, five of which is necrotic. All right, so damage and just tally me up the whole damage, I'm sorry. Absolutely. Uh, 15 and 18. Oh, okay. 10 of which is necrotic. Okay, so that's gone 33, y'all. 30, thank you, thank you. Yep. Wow. And I still haven't even chosen this thing as my cursed target, which I <laughs> should do, because that's just a fucking bonus action. All right. In fact, I will have done that, and then I will add an additional <laughs> six damage to that total. <laughs> this poor boy. Yeah. 
had ow. Take that, you damn ogre. <laughs> yeah, hex, hex blades do a lot of damage. Get the Shrek out of here. And it is cursed. Yep. <laughs> I just wanted lunch. You should have eaten your fucking scorpions. <laughs> wanted war. Uh, all right. Yeah, we're now up to Ezra's turn. You hear that, chick? It's hungry. <laughs> Uh, okay, so you said that there were now scorpions there are now blocking four my scor- path? There are now four sc- giant scorpions prone on the floor in front of you. Okay. <laughs> giant scorpions, so I can't just be like, all right, let's trample them, Sally. Uh, actually, uh, important thing, and I don't actually, know... Actually, uh, between him and me, it's its turn, isn't it? The, o- the ogre? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That yeah, it right. would be. Yeah, because it, it ran as a reaction. That wasn't its turn. Although, does it have to continue fleeing through its turn, or like? No. What's no. The, okay, that's no. just it. Okay. Yeah, just moves. Yeah, it that, that just that just fucked him up real good. Yeah. So it's, it's a momentary spooking. Yeah, he like turns around, and looks at you. You're not a man- manticore. What am I doing? <laughs> he looks down over at Dagon. I'm so mad at you. I'm gonna eat you first. Come on, eat up. <laughs> All right, rolled to get out of Rave and Feeblement. He does, unfortunately. That's fine. All right, uh, I need you to roll me. Let's see, hold on, let me double check something here. Do, 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 checks versus contest. Okay, skill components, sorry. Just double checking if I'm getting this right because if I don't, the rules lawyers will come at me like a fucking ton of bricks. Drink, let's this is the target strength. Okay, you can either choose your strength, you can choose athletics or acrobatics for this as he goes down to grab you, like camel and all. I'll go with athletics. And I will roll for the camel as well. Camel will try to do acrobatics. Camel fails miserably. I uh, got a 17. 17? All right, time to roll for this boy. Now to actually get him. Can I ask what his roll was? Strength. Uh, oh. What what the number was? Oh, the number for him for uh, for cutting words purposes. Oh, for cutting words purposes, he was a nineteen. You dummy! You can't grapple nothing. Cutting words. Subtract five from that. Whoop, 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 whoop. And burning. Nope. <laughs> he gets the camel only. Burning up my bardic inspiration for that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yep. So you just slip right out of his hand as he grabs the camel. Bye, meat. <laughs> Meat indeed, as the ogre looks at the camel, <laughs> bites the head off. Jesus. <laughs> Takes his turn, pats his stomach, and you actually watch as some of his cuts start to heal up again. That's And he eats the rest of the camel. He can't grapple. Nothing may have been an exaggeration, but he is not <laughs> as good at grappling as he thinks he is. Uh, he has regained 50 HP. Jeez! It's a lot of meat on that camel. Fucking what? You named it meat. <laughs> <laughs> it's one healthy camel. What is this thing? And that was one attack. His <laughs> final attack looks down to you and goes for another stomp. Athletics. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, dexterity check to get out of the way. Oh. It's a. Oh, actually, you know what? A, no. It's a so, save against. Yeah. Do you do you want to save against it or because it's a half damage thing? It's one of his specials. I mean, I'd I'd like to get half damage. <laughs> Might as well up. try. Yeah. Yeah, no, no harm, no foul. Uh, 17 again. Acrobatics. Uh, 17? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, you, you kind of just, like, pass in between his toes just at the last second. Yeah, slide. Woo! Yep, you, you pretty much, like, fucking limbo lower now your way through his toes. That is his turn. Now it's your turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to... So, so the the scorpions are prone, right? You said they're just kind of flailing around. Yep. Okay. I'm going to look f- for my shock dagger. It's uh, beyond them. So it's past them. So I'm gonna have to get around them first. Yep. The, okay. What's past them is that bubble. Like, that's the one thing that I feel like we're losing track of. Well, the in this the fight. bubble would have to be like kind of off to. I've been imagining it kind of to the side if he came out of it between us. Yeah, he came out of it. And then he dropped the scorpions, which were behind him. So that bubble has to be somewhere there. Oh no, the bubble is there. It's it's go. going. The bubble's there, and I've been calculating the damage for scorpion three and four because they're next to it. Okay. Okay, so they're like right at the edge of the bubble. Yes. If, okay, that would make sense. So is my shock dagger in that bubble? Is that where? It landed? No, it's not. It's okay. behind. It's behind number two, which is in front of you. 
Okay. It's on the road, basically. Well, I'm gonna have to deal with that anyway. Just so long as I can, so so I do see it though. I am. Yeah. Okay. It is not lost, which was the important part. And it's not like they they can't take attack of opportunity against you going over it. It's mm -hmm. just that them flailing around, you're going to have to roll a really good acrobatics or athletics check to do something to get beyond them to get to your dagger. Okay. Yeah, for the sake of it, if those scorpions end their turn in there, they have to make a DC save 16 or else take 2d6 acid damage. Or that's 2D8. what I. That's what I was rolling. Yeah. Okay. Um. So I have to dexterity over them to get to that? You can dex, if, if, if that's you can, what I would can, want to do. If you want to leap over them, uh, that's a strength check. If you want to uh, if you want to weave in between them, that's a dexterity check. Okay. <clears throat> let's let's MacGyver this again. Uh, alchemy jug with my cunning action. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> these these scorpions aren't going nowhere. Uh, with my alchemy jug, I have it create glue. Okay. Where are you going to pour it? Because it's going to adhese to the actual alchemy jug unless you pour it out now. I'm going to pour it. I'm just going to slather it on these scorpions and stick them on their back. Splash! <laughs> All right. If you're, if you're looking to splash it out, yeah. it's going to be I'm, a deck save. Yeah, that's sorry. a deck save. Okay. For them against whatever your dex DC would be, which would be eight plus your dex modifier, I think. Okay, well, if that's what it is, then it's 11. 11? All right, these boys get disadvantage because they're prone. Good thing you got disadvantage because you got a nat one on that one. Hey! Scorpion one is adhesed to the floor. Or at least a bunch of sand. Scorpion two <laughs> is not getting that nat 20 I just rolled. Scorpion two, however, is going to pass that. Okay. Scorpion three... Fails. Scorpion four. Fails. He also got a nat 20, but right, also they, and, they're, and they're trapped in the bubble. <laughs> so so three out of four ain't bad. Two out of four. Oh, was it two? Sorry. Um, all right, then I, uh, since that was my, my free action and then my action of dumping it, I am now going to try and move past them. Uh, so would that just be then acrobatics, like over them, or that would be the, the yes. glued ones? Are they less of a factor now? I don't know how this is still gonna going work. Going around them is probably best. Yeah, going around them is dex. That's because uh, going over them would mean going if towards going, the if bubble. If you're going to pass through the, you could pass through two who has not been adhesed. If you were going to pass through one or three, I would have counted that as difficult terrain because of the glue. Okay. All right. Um, then yeah, then I will then I will dex around them to uh, just so I can get myself closer to that dagger and keep moving again. All right, roll dex. Uh, is this a save or just a check? Check. Uh, 15. Disadvantage. Yep. Uh, you easily dance around the scorpions flailing <laughs> and uh, you are now standing right above, you are, behind, you are behind the creature and you are now standing right next to Frida and there's your dagger. Okay. That would be the end of my turn since I've moved into action. Uh, action. You can. Uh, oh yeah, that's fine. Never mind. I apologize. Uh, Frida looks over at the scorpion that's adhesed into the floor. Begins to mutter something as her blade begins Im imbued with some dark necrotic energy. She cuts it over her wrist, and the blood seeps into the middle of the onk-like symbol in the middle. Plunges it in. And the blade almost looks like it washes over the scorpion as she stabs down on it with a coup de gras. And I will... You know what? Yeah, no, that gets max damage with the coup de gras because it's fucking restrained now, too. So all those things that are now glued to the floor are considered restrained, which you can coup de gras. Okay. And with that, she kills scorpion one. Uh, I don't remember... I, I wish I, I wrote this down as well, and I know I'm going to get shit for this, but I forget if clerics get a second attack on level they, five. Uh, level they, don't five. Get, they don't get second attack. Casters mm -hmm. don't. Yeah, so that's her turn. Okay. Yeah. She is a death domain cleric. Uh, now we're up to Scorpion 2. Scorpion 2 uses his speed. Never mind, nat once. <laughs> 
Oh, nothing's going my way today. Get me out of here. First I get captured by an ogre, then I get lit on, then I hear sloshing and it gets real cold. Then I get lit on fire. <laughs> now I'm covered in glue. Yeah, he was about he was about to stand up and you step on his face. <laughs> Flip. Ow. Uh number three. Uh what do I have to roll to for the bubble? Uh when they start in their turn in the bubble, they just automatically take 2d6 damage. Okay, so roll it me... then, please. Six plus uh, one, seven damage. Seven when cold Mash damage. picks up the scorpion with a writhing tentacle and sucks it in. <laughs> roll again for number four. Six damage. That one is still alive. <laughs> it uses its tail to slap away the grabbing tentacle. <laughs> And he will, he has disadvantage to get up with his prone because he is adhesed to the floor. And if he ends his turn there, that's not good for him because yeah, then the tentacles his, will He ends his turn there. <laughs> 11. Gone. <laughs> awesome. So we're down to just one more living scorpion, it sounds like? Yep. Okay, awesome. And we are now up to you. Uh, let's see. You know what? I'm just going to kick it old school. I'm going to, well, I'm still between the remaining scorpion and the... You're ten feet away, actually, so you can move on up to it if you would like. Okay. Um... <clears throat> I feel like he's less of a threat at this point, and I've got... Yeah, I'm just going to, uh... I'm going to move my move my movement away from the scorpion and the writhing mass of, of horribleness and uh, just put some distance in between there. I'm going to move my max uh, my max speed of 30 just away from all that. Like, you are now 15 feet away from uh, Dagon and the ogre. Okay. Yeah, that's... Um, actually, if anything, I'll I'll leave a little more distance between, between us two and just, like, move away from both, because... 20 or 25? Um... Yeah, 25 okay. is, is fine. Yeah. And I'm going to hit the ogre with uh, with vicious mockery. All righty. Hey, you dummy. Most of your scorpions are dead. You're not getting out of this well. You should just give up right now. <laughs> he gets a uh, wisdom, yeah, wisdom save. <laughs> no. <laughs> with a fucking three, Nate minus two, he had a one. <laughs> All right, so he's going to take seven psychic damage. <laughs> oh. And his next attack roll is at disadvantage. Oh, fuck. <laughs> All right. Dagon, you're up. No chick, time to earn our paycheck. Pull my devil trigger. Boom. <laughs> All right. Uh, he has to make a charisma save versus DC 16 right that now. That is or else... his worst stat. I figure he's not a handsome man, but I didn't know. Maybe <laughs> he's a talker. Now he's not anymore. <laughs> He was, gonna, he, was yeah. walk, he was on his way to a fucking gene model commercial and you screwed it up for him. <laughs> That's too bad. No! He with is... a fucking minus five in charisma with a seven, he got a two. He is frightened of me. Uh, <laughs> and now Six, I deal seven. an additional necrotic damage equal to my level with every attack. I grip Chick with two hands and I go at him. With a 19 on the die and him being cursed, that counts as a crit. Fuck. Yep. And with a two-handed longsword, that is a d10 for damage. So, 2d10. Uh, that is 15 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6. 15 plus 16. 20, yeah. That's attack 1. Attack 2 is a... 18 to hit. Uh, I believe we said that hit before, but that does that all hits. Yes, it does. All right. One d10. That's five, fifteen, twenty-one damage. Eleven of which is necrotic for the second attack. You plunge. It. He's he's frightened that he trips down. You actually jump up on his kneecap and lunge the sword into his chest where his heart would be, and he falls <laughs> over dead. <laughs> and Chick starts going ape shit because this thing is now dead. Yep, yep. eat up. Yep, your so you watch as like the hilt the hilt of your sword turns into a mouth and it bores into where the slice was that you made. Oh, that's gross. Just eat the soul. You don't need the meat. Face, well, you, face, you, face, you watch. Face, you watch as his. You watch as like the blade starts to glow this ethereal looking blue, 
and then it clamps back up again. There's a hole in a chunk where the heart used to be, but the soul is gone. Yes, I know all gobla means many things. Nas, nas, nana, fear. Yeah, that's still what I'm pronouncing it. I don't care. All right, uh, Ezra, there is one final scorpion in front of you. All right. You have your dagger. I was going to say, yes. <laughs> I just go ahead and coup de gras this motherfucker with my plus one dagger. Uh, roll damage, act as a critical. Okay. Uh, so... Take it a sneak attack as well. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, all right. That's 3d6 added to that. Uh, ba -ba. So that'll be 12 plus... So 18 <laughs> with all of that. <laughs> yeah, if you, you fucking plunge this thing into its mouth and it chitters and, like, just falls over dead. <laughs> hey, you dumb buzzard! Fucking you, finally! And that's you, when we'll take a break. <laughs> you still hungry? All you have to do is come closer to us. <laughs> they also got those like skeletal wings. It's just like black fire all over him. <sighs> Been a while. <laughs> I just kind of look around at this group. Guys, our new group is cool. <laughs> and with that, we'll take a break here. This we'll be like, right back after this. This is like the dark middle chapter, Natural Wonders. <laughs> Welcome back to the table. There we go. Hey, -oh. now we're here. All righty. Uh, real quick, before we go on, I just want to note, make a note of something I, I noticed. Uh, I had it written down that we had 150 rubies. Yes. I, uh, I, I had been working on the I math. I was that mistaken. We, I was working under the math that we had 100. So just to make sure it's clear, I still gave 30 to the crew. Yep. We left so you got behind, 120. So we have 120. Fair enough. Or, so. All right. Well, congratulations. You have destroyed the ogre as it is now sitting there dead. Survival check. <laughs> to carve out useful bits of it and the camel. The camel's completely gone. It's in its, <laughs> it's, in its stomach, man. Oh, I thought it only ripped off the head. My bad. No, it, I didn't it, know it, that it, thing scarfed the fucking... Yeah, it, it, you, that's why it regenerated. It used its turn to eat the whole thing. Oh, wow. That thing's a fucking beast. All right. Uh, well, survival check to see what I can find on this thing. 16. All righty. Also, I, I, I dispel the mass <laughs> of... Sloshing <laughs> evilness. Which I always kind of figured is the stomach of Chick, but... <laughs> Frida now looks o like, kind of like, walks her way over towards the giant ogre. She smiles, pulls her dagger, and starts carving into it the symbol that's on the short sword, and starts praying to herself as she keeps carving. As she's doing that, I'm carving into various other bits of it, just looking for fun little doodads and what's it's it might have on it. Like, oh, already? I don't know. Organs and Let things me go that ahead might and roll be worth real quick it. For this thing. Uh, okay, on it you find three pieces of silver jewelry. Silver jewelry? Yep. Uh, you're not a betting man, but it'll probably fetch you more than just a piece of silver. Uh, on it you also find a keg of ale. Ooh. And then carving the beast out itself, uh, is there any sort of like piece of the of the giant you're trying to obtain in particular? Let's see. Its heart is gone, so oh, that's yeah. not Ch salvageable. Ch Ch Chick has the heart. He can have the heart. I don't care. Um, trying to think what pieces <clears throat> might actually go for money somewhere. Its head would probably fetch a uh, price at you know places where you can turn in monster parts for bounties. Mm. Um, there are people in bazaars that probably are in the Ring of Mortals that would pay for something like that. How big is its head? Its head is... Yeah, how tall was this thing exactly? This thing was 14 feet tall. Okay, so its head's probably... The head is, like, almost a little bit taller than Eloy. It's a big head to be carting around. <laughs> yep. Eyeballs, though. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Well, you're the one carving it. Ezra's just probably looking on in somewhat horror, but also we've carved up our share of corpses before. It's not like he's never seen this. I'm going to try to collect maybe a couple of vials of stomach acid, and then I'm going to try to collect an eyeball or something. All right, so what do you want to put the 19 towards? Uh, sorry, it was a 16. 16, yeah. What do you want to put the 16 towards? I'll put that towards the stomach acid, because I think that's more valuable. All right, do you have any open vials? I do. 
Alrighty, you can take at least two vials of ogre stomach acid. Two Digestive vials? fluids. Ogre acid. And if you want to go for the eyes, that's going to be another check. Ogre acid is my metal band. <laughs> As well. well. That's a 17. 17? You're able to at least produce one eye completely and and, uh, and capitalize on putting it away in a bottle pretty easily. I just imagine when I'm carving at it with my dagger chicks, just like, <laughs> just like biting at it. No, stop it. Yes. I already had enough. Uh, do you do alchemies? Is, is any of that like an, al an active ingredient? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Just grabbing pieces. M must have just been my ogre act of imagination. Me meanwhile, meanwhile, Frida's gonna roll her own survival check as she moves over towards the scalp of the creature. With a nat 20, she carves completely and takes the brain. She starts dice, uh, like, moving her, her clawed fingers through the folds of the gray matter, finds a certain point, starts muttering an infernal, Plunges her hand in and pulls out the brainstem. So is this like a like a ritual or <laughs> Ezra just kind of looking over trying she like, not to she like be kind of she out. kind of like smiles and like finds a piece of leather in like her band and wraps around it. I will now know its pain. I mean, it wasn't using its brain in life very well, and certainly not using it in death. Maybe you'll find more use out of it. Indeed. Fecker will be very pleased with his tribute of its pain. He tends to be. But now we are unfortunately one camel short. Hmm. Who wants to ride Eloy? You I know suppose, you want to. I suppose I lost my camel. Uh, do you mind? I have been waiting literally since I left home. <laughs> well, if you insist. Yay! Roll a strike check. <laughs> Take on hops on Eloy's back. <laughs> Roll a strike check. Uh, I mean. What? I'll throw this out there. Oh, no, this, this, is, is... this is to keep going. Okay. Like, while you're traveling, it's like your survival check in a way. I mean, <laughs> Eloy can act as a mount for medium-sized and smaller creatures. He just, oh, like, fair enough. can. Yeah, that's a racial ability. Oh, uh, right, right, right. I apologize. And Dagon's going to be very nice and cast Prestidigitation, just holding his hand out. Like, you get a cool breeze on the back of your head for the <laughs> oh, ride. Oh, well, thank you. All right, so with that, you guys continue on your way. However, Ezra, you're not too plussed with everything that <laughs> just happened here. You look off into the distance, you actually see three palm trees with a couple of barrels next to it. All right, Captain. Hey, uh, I'm sorry. It's just, it's been, this sun has been getting to me, and that that fight was scary. Would you like <laughs> some ale? I don't know where that's been. <laughs> it was in its stomach. The ogre's <laughs> butt. The ogre's butt. I point out the, the trees and barrels that I'm seeing. Does anyone want to just, maybe just take a, a, a short break over there? You look off in the distance, and he is correct. Uh, there are multiple broken barrels that lead up to, like, three or four other barrels that pretty much look like the same kind of keg that you had from the ogre, and it's hiding underneath the tree. All right, by the way, this bur did that fucking vulture ever come down for this thing? No, the vulture's waiting for you guys to move on. Mm, He's keeping maker. his distance. <laughs> Oh, finally! You hear in the background. Does this ogre count as a humanoid? I'm gonna say no. Okay. Well, either way, I, I point out what seems to be <laughs> some vegetation and cover and barrels. Be like, we just make make a quick break just over there, if it would please the crew. You're in charge here, Captain. I... If you must, says Frida. She's like cleaning off her dagger and puts it back at, uh, in her cloak. <laughs> Not crazy about the tone, but Captain needs a, Captain needs a second. <laughs> <laughs> Captain needs a sippy of a drink. <laughs> so uh, what do you do then? I uh, lead us in that direction. <laughs> All right. And once you we walk, get there, you walk in the direction. You are now off the path. Uh, you're it's, it's far enough. Like it's like 120 feet away. You could get there easily. There's no difficult terrain. It's not like I'm adding days to our trip or something. No, no, you're not. You can see it off in the distance. It's fine. You're starting to walk past. You lead up to now. There's a bunch of uh, broken barrels around uh, around where you uh, were standing. Uh, looking on it, you see emblems of the calls on it, and it also like is a little bit of etched on it. It it says knifed in it, like very cleanly. It's not like it's like someone took a knife and said this. Uh, it says uh, containment of liquid. That's the only words you get on the broken barrels. Well, hey, these barrels used to contain liquid. Probably good for the desert. 
you walk up to one of the whole ones that's slaying in the earth right now. You're not at the trees just yet. You said we're going uphill, right? You're slightly going uphill. All right, Dagon's going to be like looking around because we've been riding for about four hours, and it should have been like a half day's march. You want to so, roll with your spyglass? Yeah, I, I'm just looking to see if I can find <laughs> uh, fur foes from here because we should be getting close. Uh, that is a 14 in perception. Standing on the dune, you can see signs of civilization off in the distance. You're about like an hour or two to travel away. All right, off in that direction then. Cut about an hour off our journey, so I say... No I, problem resting. You said there was a, a barrel there? You're now that standing like above one of the barrels that's under the that's under the sand. Like, you can see it, it's mm, still hold okay. up. Okay. I investigate to make sure it's actually <laughs> full. <laughs> not quite sure if I want to open it yet, because I'm not sure Roll what's it. in there. But. Yeah, liquid seems suspicious. If it was water, wouldn't it just say water? Yeah, it was my thought. Uh, Where do you think this keg came from? Uh, 13 on my investigation. You hoist it up, and you hear sloshing on the inside. Pulling the... Co- uh, you can, like, see the something seeping out from it, so there's a hole in here, but it looks like it was still kind of, like holding in on it, like you actually watch as like a couple of like tiny scorpions kind of scatter away from the moisture. You take a like a, sn- a sniff at it. It Going, smells like okay. it smells like nothing. It probably is just straight up water. Well, Dagon's just gonna go take a nap under a tree. You head over to the tree? Yeah. All right, you are now sitting at the tree next to the other uh, barrels that are standing up. <sighs> Cover my eyes with my hood. Mm-hmm. Let me know if anything happens. You got it, Dagon. I from my bag I, I produce a wax finger <laughs> just in case this is some sort of uh, dangerous material <laughs> I dip the finger into the liquid from the cork like the hole I pulled the cork out of you pull it up looks like water it's fresh water <laughs> all right well Eloy it seems to be water it looks like a Looks like there was no trickery afoot here. Uh, I go ahead and... We're trying to draw from this one. If you try, it's going to go into the sand. Oh, okay. Your better bet is to go to the ones that are standing up. Yeah. In that case, I head over to the uh, intact ones. Yeah, there are three trees. There are three palm trees. Dagon's sleeping under one that... Mm. Which one are you sleeping on? Because one has a barrel, one has a barrel, and one does not. Whichever one has the best shade. That would be the one in the middle. That'll be that one then. All right, you're sleeping in the middle tree where there is one barrel sitting next to it. The barrel that he's not sleeping by, I, I'm going to go ahead and try and fill my water skin. Uh, from. You open it and you watch as a row of teeth is looking up at of you. Of course. And it goes to bite. <laughs> With a nat twenty, it swallows your head whole. It swallows your head whole. It's on, you're, there's now a oh, barrel. It's clamped, on, onto, it's him. clamped okay. onto his head. <laughs> Very calmly. <laughs> and did, it, did it hurt him at all? Yes, it did. I'm oh, going okay. to roll damage. So I think calmly might not be. Okay, the... then never mind. Yeah, <laughs> there's going to be pain involved. And if it was just a quick, like, ow. Ah! Uh, okay, fellas. so. <laughs> 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I should have known this was the trick. Of course, the one we investigate is the one that's fine. 25 points of damage, and let me see your sheet. Jesus! I'm assuming this sound would wake me up. Then again, I probably wouldn't have had time to actually fall asleep. If you're well, looking, you, you hear the sound of like wood crunch, crunch like cr- like crumbling. The fuck. If was, you're looking oh. for inventory, <laughs> it's the on the back at the top. Ah, here we are. It's like the fuck. Was, oh, plus shock dagger and uh, flame staff. I have those up front where my weapons and stuff normally yeah. are. Yeah, your tongue. Uh, you, uh, you guys watch as a tongue kind of like lashes out and digs into his shirt. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> And it pulls it back up and lets go of his head. You're looking as like, there's a ring of teeth around, like bite marks around his neck, and the barrel hits the floor. With that damage, uh, you you, you, feel, you do feel that this thing has pilfered you in some way. Okay. The f- nope, looks ah. like no rest for the weary. Okay. <laughs> This barrel's uh, not not a nice one. <laughs> I, put, yeah, I, I, I put my hand on the back of your, like uh, on your back, and you heal six. Uh, you heal six damage. <sighs> you all right? Uh, a little shaken. You, you, are, you, you, are, you are like 
like fucking Venkman in uh, Ghostbusters. You're slimed from head to toe. Uh, just, <laughs> I feel more violated than hurt at this point. Though I am definitely also hurt. Mm, mimics. Nasty batch. Uh, <sighs> well, fuck this noise. <laughs> I point, I point my crossbow at it. <laughs> You it, doesn't shoot it? Seem, it doesn't seem too active at the moment, Captain. No, it just it just hit the floor. It's like standing there. You still see the teeth. It's breathing. The barrel is breathing. Well, this thing took something from me. Do you want to check your inventory to find out what it is? Yes. <laughs> Even though I'm probably gonna kill you're, kill it for it anyway. You're you're patting yourself down. <laughs> Everything seems kind of fine. You look at you feel in your inventory. One of your baubles is missing. Oh, the the glass things no, or oh. no. You look at you, like a pouch full of your baubles. You look it through it. Mm -hmm. There's a ring missing. Oh my god! The ring of free action. The free is action gone. ring. Fuck. Oh yeah, no, we're killing this thing. Wait, why? Why weren't you wearing that? Because <laughs> I didn't know if there'd be a better person to have it. It's been something I've just been holding. Anyway, aiming my crossbow at it. Shoot it. <laughs> Going ahead to uh, hold hit. It's now my hex. It's now cursed, by the way. <laughs> just, just has that now. Um, Fifteen. Your arrow deflects right off it. Well, uh, okay. Not exactly what I expected. Hey, buddy, can you talk like those other mimics we've met? Did you pick that up? Any of that up, chick? Is that your language? No. It didn't sound. Oh. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't even go. <laughs> and it goes. No. <laughs> just <laughs> just oh, good. You're picking up my language now. Ah, now who's influenced? <laughs> oh, fuck you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, may as well give this a shot, I suppose. I stand above it and just kind of stab down with chick. Uh, will a 26 hit? It parries Chick by biting down on it and starts shaking. Ching. Oh no, it's 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 wriggling around. You hear Chick. Wow, I really felt like I had that one too. <laughs> oh, calm down. <laughs> it, the the tongue lashes out and tries to like grab a Chick, but then it, like it tastes it. You see like it's like licking the hilt. Yeah. Throws him back out. All right, don't think we can hurt this thing too well. Shuck. <laughs> oh, if you disappear, you just come back anyway and you know it. <laughs> yeah, it hurts me too. The thing is still breathing on the floor. Does it have like a, a like, so it has a mouth. Like It, it has a mouth, a it's the lid. The lid keeps closing in and out. Okay, all right. I'm as we're sitting back thinking, he may have an idea, but he doesn't want to jump into it just yet. Elo, do you have any plans? Hmm. No. Suggestion only works if uh, if it shares a language with me, which it. Mm. If it is, it's not fessing up. <laughs> <laughs> I look over at Frida. Any any experience with uh, barrel mimics? She shakes her head. I've never heard. I've never seen such a thing before. Me neither. I wonder if it feels pain. I have. I have a way we could maybe test that and find out. But uh, could just make things go from bad to worse. <laughs> See, because most of you haven't seen this, but Eloy has. I have these glass beads. <laughs> oh boy, that sounds like a. You know what? This is a. This is a gamble, but. It, it's probably less uh, <laughs> less bad if it goes wrong than that. I cast friends on it, which gives me an advantage on charisma checks. Hey, buddy, if you speak common, we can just talk this out. It's fine. Look, let's just talk this through. Maybe we have more stuff that you'd like. We can figure out a trade. Am I getting through to it? Does it seem to be understanding yeah, me at all? <laughs> all right, I'm going to roll intelligence checks to see if I can even figure out what language this thing is speaking. Uh, ten? Probably not. Unless it happens the, to be a language. It's the ravings of a madman. It's not even a language. 
It was just, it is it's just pretty much ta- Taz, the Tasmanian deviling you right now. Gotcha. <laughs> I mean, so, some, somebody left it here. So this thing is a barrel. Is it like, like what you'd think of a barrel? Like it's wooden? mimicking all the other barrels around it. It's mimicking itself to look like water to to steal stuff from people. Okay, but as far as I can tell, it is it is only <clears throat> mimicking. It's not actually made of like wooden metal. As far as you could tell, you could the only thing you were able to see was to catch a little bit of a glimpse of its maw when the when the lid opens up. Mm. As of right now, it's like it kind of like wobbled itself to sit back up again. It's just sitting there waiting. Well, yeah, I got I mean I I can shoot I can shoot arrows at it, but you tried that. Yeah, that didn't and seem I'll to be do honest, I feel like I had a really good shot on it with Chick, and it yeah, just kind of you, didn't even pay attention. It really. doesn't seem to care very much. I wonder if it if it were to ingest an explosive bolt. <clears throat> I mean... I, maybe the outside is just really strong, and it just, you know, scared Chick more than, it's, than Chick scared it. The only other thing I could think to try is, like, build a big bonfire and try to, like, roll it into it. Yeah. That seems like a lot of time. You hear you hear Chick whisper something in your ear. He he tells you that it feels way more deeper than it actually is. That like the blade he ate Chick so far down that the the tip the tip of his blade should have actually went out the other side, but it kept going. Hmm. To the hilt, you say. This was not just a tip. He took the whole blade. Any of you have a shovel? I didn't buy a shovel. Have crowbar and hammer. Yeah, I've got like a climber's kit. I, I could probably find something that would work in a pinch, but not a shovel per se. <laughs> no, I want to burn my only other spell today just to... <laughs> just to experiment this. Yeah. Well, well, no, could, just, uh, just just to have flavor for something else to dig this fucking hole for me. Yeah, well, Warlocks, not beyond uh, it. Warlocks get their spells back on a short rest, though, right? So, Plus, you're near a town. You're... Ah, fair, fair enough. I'm going to summon my friend, Varric. <laughs> Varric, Varric, listen. <laughs> I need you to dig a hole beneath that barrel. <laughs> just dig. Just, just, just for me. Come on. It's a nice sunny day. It's a sunny day. You can enjoy it. <laughs> oh, the tongue he's... lashes out and eats him. <laughs> hmm. That was just a soul, right? Yeah, I'm not really sure how this works. Okay. Chick's just like, oh no, you don't. <laughs> Sucks it back in. <laughs> okay. Well, this is still going to work for another hour, so... <laughs> <laughs> Such encounter. A, such a strange uh, being we found. <laughs> I lo- writing this encounter was fun last night. <laughs> there's, there's a part of me that's just like, you know what? I wasn't using that ring anyway. It's sad, but I'll tell you, it's uh, a little more concerning now that I know that it can actually eat spectral beings. But Frida actually like holds her short sword out and you watch as the tongue kind of like laps out like almost trying to reach for it pulls it away regular dagger its tongue hides back in hmm. it eats Looks magic like... hmm. well have we tried harvesting its sweat not yet <laughs> however that's mostly because anything that gets close it seems to clamp down on This barrel of ale that I've been carrying around. I say we try to get this thing fucking crunk. <laughs> I do have a bottle of wine. I'm gonna bust open the top of that and just start like trying to pour it in there. Uh, that would mean you would have to open the lid to its mouth. Accurate. <laughs> Varric! <laughs> oh. I know, 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 I know. With the barrel, though, Varric. I didn't even tell him to pick it up yet. I was, <laughs> I was still waiting for him to do the thing. He didn't even have him go near it. 
Varric, just listen. This I know you're. So, I know. I know. I know. Shh, it's okay. You're out. It's, you're out for now. Enjoy the time while you're out. What about, we've discussed this. We've discussed this. It's hard being in there. I know. It's sloshing noises and it's horrible. ASMR 24/7. I know. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so please, just grab the barrel. Just, just pour. Just pour with me. Come on. I'll, I'll help. I'll help. <laughs> Come on, yes. Like in the old times, yes. Here we go. Yeah, we both pick it up and we walk over to the other barrel and we just start pouring. <laughs> he goes to open the lid. It takes him inside of him. All right, with hang the, on. With the barrel. No, with the barrel. Hmm. Must have been magic ale. All right. <laughs> <laughs> There's Varric and the bottle and the keg of ale. Uh, it's just covered in slime. Is the keg empty now? Nope. Oh, but it was opened. It should have at least been pouring it, out. It, well, it poured a little bit, but it, it looks like it's just pouring out now. Like, not just a lot like of people take it out. All right, yeah, cork it back up. It's okay, Varric. You you know what? Go take a nap under the tree. It's real nice over there. Just enjoy your time out here. <laughs> no, 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 chick. I'm in charge right now. <laughs> go take a nice nap. Yeah. There you go. Have a nice day. Okay. He gets sucked back in in an hour. It's going to be horrible for him. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be like, so he's still out here. I have my grappling chain gun. If I just loop one of that around him, it's got 120 feet to go. Can you tell him to look for a ring? And then we pull him out. <laughs> Varric! <laughs> Sturgeon looks at you. <laughs> Varric, okay, okay. So we're looking for a ring. I this is my new captain, by the way. This is this is Ezra. Hi, I'm Ezra. Ezra. Varric, nice to meet you. Must be a greeting from where you're from. No, <laughs> it's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> Fortunately, your compliance doesn't seem to exactly be up for your decision. Uh, we're looking for a ring. That's I not true. <laughs> you always have a choice, Varric. Just make the right one. <laughs> I describe in great detail <laughs> the free action ring. This is what we're looking for, Varric. Do you understand me? Can you, do you, do you, are you picking up what I'm putting I'm down? I'm sad, not Jeff, you asshole! Oh, look, I don't he know. He understands what you're saying. Okay, I don't know how this works. I wasn't sure if there was some sort of <laughs> ethereal right, this is, this plane is, between us that was garbling my speak. This is Varric. He was uh, the cannoneer and handyman on my previous ship. He, All I've heard this man do so far is wail and moan. I wasn't sure exactly where language. He's, he's, had, he's had a very, very rough time in there. It's been a few years. No, that seems fair. I try to let them out in shifts, but... He's got a very sad grimace right now, so I, I, I assumed. Anyway, Varric, we're looking for this ring. It's kind of the, the, the big problem here. I'm going to, I have, I have my chain gun. I'm going to loop this around you. Falls to the floor. Okay, I guess that stops that plan. He doesn't technically exist. Uh, <laughs> all right. I mean, physically. You exist. I, I still care about you, Varric. Oh, thanks. This is technically a magical... <laughs> like, well, no, it's technology. Never mind. You can grab it. If you hang on to this, we'll be able to pull you out, you know, like the fun little slip and slide that you've been in so far. I don't actually know how it's been, but I'm assuming <laughs> it's... We just need this ring. It's very important. It's dark. That's true. Do we have anything that... Oh, I have a lantern. I know. Uh, the, end of the grappling hook on the chain. I touch it and cast the cantrip light on it. Okay. So the grappling hook is now lit. There you are. See, that's much easier. Now you'll be able to see everything when you're in there. I'm not sure if that'll make it better. But oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> now you'll at least know the horror you're descending into, Varric. We're just we looking have, for a ring. Now we have 120 feet of, of chain here. I assume that's enough. But then again, I've been hearing tales that this barrel is bigger on the inside. So uh, what I'm going to need you to do is just give two quick tugs when you've found what we're looking for. And, uh, you know, if you start yank, you know what, just give tugs if uh, you find what you're looking for. If it's a panicked tug, I'll know to, that you're still looking. <laughs> just give just give real two concise tugs so I can tell the difference between, oh my god, there's something in here with me and it scared me for a second. Like, and, well, like when we're plundering those sunken ships. Yeah. All right. Varric walks over, holding on to... The uh, the hook. Dagon gives him a nice big thumbs up. Yeah. <laughs> he like goes, 
I don't know. <laughs> All right, there Roll you go. Roll strength check. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say. I, I'm, I'm As he's to, going I'm over help. there, I was, I was like, I'm going to need some help holding this. Yeah, I'll get. I'll, I'll assist. All right, a strength check. Uh, 17. Strength or athletics? Is, would oh, it be yeah. the same? Athletics, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I got a 17 as well, actually. 11 on the die. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, indeed. <laughs> No, Ezra, you go flying completely in there. You I'm are trying, feet out. I'm trying, I'm trying to OGS. You are feet out. You see nothing but sloshing and just. <laughs> oh, you little bar- extra help. You barely just made it. Frida gets in there to try to help you as well. Oh. <laughs> you watch as the light completely fades away from your vision. Oh. This thing is deeper. This thing goes down. I have dark vision. Does that help? You just see a wall of flesh. <laughs> okay. Pulsing, <laughs> squishy flesh. Ha. Huh. All right. Frida rolls a 14 to keep you afloat. You're barely hanging on. It's starting to drag you in now. Uh, yeah, I'm just grabbing, uh, creating a pull chain. I grab Frida. Frida, Frida grabs you. Just... Oh. Roll a strength check. Uh. Nine. You're you're slowly going in. You're not. This is like nothing's stopping this thing from going go, going forward. Oh god, it doesn't smell as bad as I think it does. Oh, his, it his does. His feet are completely almost out of sight. <laughs> oh no. Yep. Now your wrist. Now it's up to your elbow. <laughs> oh, it's just as slimy as I thought. <laughs> oh uh. shit! This brings back way too many memories. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm giving uh, you one turn to do something. I, I was gonna say I'm I'm looking around inside here to see like I I've you got... see what little bit of light there is off of the distance, but there's still like a wall of flesh. Touch nothing but the ring. <laughs> <laughs> Chick has I mean not Chick. Uh, Varric. Have, I, have I been able to hear yeah. or ask no, Var- anything Varric, about you, Varric? You you heard him sobbing as he went down, but now he's gone, and the light is gone now too. There is no light. I'm scared to clink back, because what if he's down there looking? (laughs) (laughs) We need that ring. Uh, (laughs) uh, Okay, so I'm I'm still sinking, right? It does not seem like they are getting me out. All right. uh, Remember, it eats magic, so the only reason why it's holding on to is you're obscuring it from taking the magic shotgun you have. Yeah. The magic uh, grappling hook. Well, you know what? If this fucker wants some magic... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> mm. Wait. Mm. Yeah, no, good idea. Good idea. I do have this slippery potion. <laughs> uh, okay. My only action right now can be extra strength checks to try to... <laughs> yeah, just to try and pull me out. Yeah, what? this is on you right now. Nah, I got you. Okay. Well then, fuck it. We'll, we'll we'll go with Plan B. I take one of these glass beads. <laughs> I'm not just gonna drop it because that's just a void. You said I'm surrounded by like flesh. I just start embedding it into this flesh. Right next to your face. It's farther as far down as I can get, but this is this is this is going to cause a reaction, good or bad. It's gonna do something. <laughs> if I just drop it, who knows? Fair enough. <laughs> Dang, right. I don't know what the fuck you're doing. I need you to roll me a sleight of hand. All with right. With disadvantage, because you can't see what's going on. Oh, even with dark sight. Okay. Well, you you pull your arm down into it to insert <laughs> the seed. That's fair. You put the bean down, but the problem is, is that your hand just goes into flesh. Well, it worked out. I got the same roll twice. 21. 21. <laughs> Vomits you back out. Ah, ah, I'm still holding ah, this gun. Click back. <laughs> <laughs> Varric is not there. Oh. All right, check. You're up. <laughs> he doesn't have hands. <laughs> oh, do you mean to suck him back out? Yes. That was my thought anyway. If you're if you're concerned about opens it. his mouth, no soul comes out of the barrel. Hmm. That's upsetting. A minute goes by, still nothing. I'm still feeling something. I'm pulling something. All right, that's really fucking down there then. Five minutes. 
I'm gonna go lay by this tree again. Eli, <laughs> Eli. Be careful of the barrels nearby. Roll perception. Perception ten. You hear screaming off of the distance from the far south of where you came. <laughs> Chick falls. Hi, Eric. No, you you get ricocheted as as Chick like. Yeah, I'm just like laying it through. Uh, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Ow. Well, okay. So this. Is there a ring anywhere near me? No. Uh, which direction did Varric come from again? The south. As far as Eloy knows, he heard screaming coming from the south. Okay. Did that? He didn't come out of the barrel, did he? he yeah, it seemed like, like he it came from that away, which is we. Is this thing like a portal to someplace down there, or? Well, that's back the way we came. Yeah. It's back the way you came, but unfortunately, due to your perception roll, you can't tell if it was from the city or elsewhere. Well, there aren't laser shooting monstrosities that I can see, so, uh. Let me make sure I mark that. I've only got By the way, this whole time, the buzzard's eating the ogre this whole time. Oh, thank God. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. I am possibly taste that good. By Eloy's the way, I pressed been, the digitation to all that mucus off of me. <laughs> Eloy's been ruffling through his, rustling through his uh, saddlebags trying to find something that might help. I mean, I guess I can try. I got this potion of clairvoyance. Uh, I could try and, try and look inside that thing and see where it leads. I mean, Varric was a soul, so I'm not sure how... Can, can you, Varric, where did you go? <laughs> it was dark. I was so scared. And there were other magical things there. Oh, it's okay. You're safe now. You're safe. It was uh, for the next three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh! <laughs> oh, man. He said there were other magical things there. He might have had a hint of where find, that took him. I couldn't find your ring. Okay. What what did you did you find anything down there? Lots of gold. Did you you didn't think to grab any of it? I was looking for the ring. Well, I mean, th there weren't any other rings. I appreciate your commitment to the job. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you come out? Cuz you came from that way. You slapped me across the face. It all happened so fast, I just kept seeing, for a second it was dark, and then the sun came out, and I was flying across the desert. As, as this abomination was pulling me back. He is an abomination, I give you that. Well, somewhere this mimic has an out hole, <laughs> apparently to the south. I'm beginning to think it's less of a mimic and more of a... I don't even know. <laughs> but either way, I, we're standing on top of it. Frida takes a look at the mimic as you guys are explaining this. I don't believe it's moving. It's not breathing anymore. Huh. You go and kick the barrel. Just tilts over. Boom. Water pours out. What the fuck? Is oh, is that one of those portals? No. Why would it be living? I, I stare intently at the water waiting for my ring to like pour out. <laughs> A minute later, the water is completely gone. Sucks to be the next person that comes through here that needs water. Well. Uh, well, with any luck, maybe we'll figure out where that thing went, but <clears throat> not much more we can do here. Eloy sets all of his uh, magical gear in a pile over a little ways away from the thing and then tries to open the lid and peer inside. You peer inside the remnants of what used to be water in a keg. It's... Guys, look, it's normal now. Do you think that's why all these kegs were busted open? <laughs> Did this... thing just inhabit these different barrels and move from barrel to barrel? My question is, how did it replace it with water? That's a great question. Maybe it's still playing Please. dead. Hold on. Eloy pulls out uh, a... Eloy, as you pull the... As you pull the uh, as you put the keg down, you hear a small giggle come from inside the keg. Of course. Eloy pulls a scroll of mending out from his pile of magical shit and sort of waves it in front of the barrel. Nothing. That giggle was all that was left. Hmm. Excuse me, um... 
Hello? I peer inside where we heard the giggle. Thank you. There's more for the legend to be given. Ah, uh, excellent. Uh, may I ask who I'm addressing? Uh, Dagon. Huxley, by the way. Wraith of Ibrakal. I care not of what you are, mortal. Okay, that's fine. Most people do, and frankly, I like it when people don't care. Your contribution will be nice for those who follow the legend of the Splendor Maw. Ah, that makes more oh. sense. The Splendor Maw. Okay. Well. <clears throat> you hear like you hear like a gust of wind come from inside, and there's nothing left in there anymore. I... What did, what did I see in there? Was there anything, or is it just a voice out it of nothing? It was just a voice. Okay. I'm I'm very interested in legends. Could you could you tell me the legend? Dagon, you want to roll an intelligence check with advantage? I mean, we were told <coughs> about the Splendor Maw already. But... Yeah, you were told. It was, well, well, I got that nat twenty, so feel free to lore drop us all the way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I pretty much gave you everything of what I what it was before. But yeah, it's 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 some kind of archfey that is that just it's some archfey creature that came out of the portal. Like million, like I don't, you don't know, years and years and years ago, and it's a eons, wa- yeah, a wandering temple that contains treasure. I guess you found some way that the treasure is constantly added into. Yeah. Next time we see it, we'll just hop on in. I guess we know that there's an outhole. As long as we got magic in our blood, I don't think it'll spit us up. Well, that's got me covered, I guess. Uh, everybody keeps telling me I'm part fay. There you go. Huh. Well, I guess we'll. I guess that lets me know where the ring is it's near the Splendor Maw. In the Splendor Maw. In the Splendor Maw. Which All is right. apparently south of us. <laughs> at that point in time, yes. <laughs> all right. Well, with that, Frida's just sitting there looking at you all. The sun's still kind of beating as it's still going down. She takes a sip of her canteen. Everyone else needs to roll a survival check after staying in the heat for this long. 18. 23. <clears throat> 22. I forgot I gave myself yep. proficiency you all, you all take one sip out of your canteen. Everyone except for Ezra has two. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, no, it was 19, but whatever. That's fine. Thought I had proficiency. I did not. Uh... For some reason, just by standing out here, you feel like the heat is actually against you. So actively, it might be best to actually head it to Furfos. Yeah, I was gonna say if 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 we've kind of figured out that like okay, this thing is not <clears throat> here anymore, whatever it was, and this magic has has left, I'd be like, all right, well, I guess back to Furfos or Furfos. <coughs> well, guess we'll see you later, Varric. <laughs> Sorry. Chick opens his mouth and Varric. <laughs> Thanks for the help. He can't hear you anymore. There's only the noise. <laughs> Is there anything that they like? Like, could I do anything nice for him the next time he's out? They each like various things. I um, Varric likes pie. Can't eat anymore though. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Oh, I'm that, sure it's hysterical to you. <laughs> yeah, putting a pie in front of him that he couldn't eat. That Probably seems more cruel than anything. Yes. Yeah. That's unfortunate. All right, with that, you guys head uh, for the next two hours as the sun is setting. You feel a crippling bite of cold as the air gusts, uh, gusts through. You enter Furfos, and that's quickly dispelled. So whatever kind of, like, weather effect you're feeling is some kind of magic. Mm, okay. But, but by just basing it on that, there, there's something afoot in the weather itself that so has walking kind of into the, So walking into this town feels like you're walking into an air-conditioned area? Or? A little bit. Okay. Uh, as you're walking past, you're seeing a bunch of Genasi, uh, some fire, some air, some earth. But what's weird is, is that they look like they're in the sun guard uh, garments, as they as you've seen back at uh, Ibrakal. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are accompanied with sphinxes, though. Like, there are, like, two sphinxes as you enter, and the guards kind of just, like, pass by. Welcome, strangers. I nod as we <clears throat> enter. Uh, entering into Furfos, uh, you are now in the middle of a small little market square. Uh, in front of you is a giant estate that takes up most of the city. Uh, you are more than likely certain that this is the uh, Neris estate. Mm. Uh 
There are a few, like, little townhomes, like, just sprinkled across the entire area since there's, like, at least a few people who live here. There's a few people who do trade, and there's people who take residence because they're part of the uh, estate for Neris. Uh, there is one inn that the guards tell you about, and it's the Paper Wasp. That is the most uh, common place for travelers who just enter the city to at least get their bearings and figure out what's going on in the city. Uh, I believe the Neris estate is where we'll find Hippolyte. <laughs> yes, definitely. Do we... However, y- you say that, yeah. but looking, looking at the estate, the gates are closed, and there's a bunch of like guards standing there. So it looks like the place is shutting down. It is, you're looking at the sun as it's going down. There are people going home from work and packing up their, uh, packing up their, uh, their stands for the bazaar. Mm-hmm. So it looks like the work night is kind of closing. Uh, you said there are guards kind of just milling around? Yep. Okay. I, I try to, like, flag one of them down just to, like, in a respectful way, not, like, help or anything. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a, uh, it's an air genasi. He turns okay. to you. Yes, citizen. How may I help you? Uh, hi. We're looking for, uh, an associate of ours, uh, Hippolyte, uh, or... Yeah, Hippolyte. yeah, Hippolyte Neris. Uh, have, have you heard this name? Do you know where we could find him? Oh, yes. He's actually one of the fellows who works within the estate. Ah, that's great. Uh, I see the, the gates are closed. I'm, I'm assuming it's after hours? Indeed. Uh, when do you open back up? Tomorrow at 6 in the morning. All right. And I'm assuming there's no way, no, no special cases we can't get in before then? We're going to have to just wait? I'm afraid not, sir. You'll have to wait. However, he does li- uh, Hippolyte does live in this town. More than likely, you'll find him at the Paper Wasp. Oh, well, okay. Well, thank you very much. Sounds like he might be heading towards the Paper Wasp, which is an inn. We were probably going to be heading there anyway. We might as well check around. <laughs> it's an inn slash tavern. Works for me. I could use a drink. I could use just a... Just a yeah, a drink would be nice. <laughs> it's been a day. Still got a bunch of teeth marks around your <laughs> yeah. neck. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe some, you know, just some alcohol to maybe clean some of this. I don't know where that thing's been. <laughs> what happened to you, sir? Oh, we were, uh, we, we found a, a small bit of shade, and there was a, a dangerous barrel that was, took a big bite out of me, but then suddenly just became a barrel again. How close were you to the city? Uh, it was about an hour's walk out. Okay, then it's not what we are worried about. It's uh, a, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> It, it seemed to be particularly hungry for magical items, so it was a, a real Ah, uh, you fell victim to the Splendor Maw, then. Yes, the very same. I see. More than likely, you'll be able to find any answers you seek to speaking to anyone within the Paper Wasp. They have had... We have many people in this town who have fell victim to the Splendor Maw as well. We ran a couple science experiments, and they didn't uh, prove super fruitful, but yeah, we'll, we'll ask around. Thank you. <clears throat> I mean, a couple magic experiments. Science is illegal. Speaking of dangerous things out in the desert, any uh, rewards for, say, doing away with an ogre or two? I would say that someone, either someone in the guard will probably compensate you for your work well done, as long as you have proof. I hold out, I hold out the, what I assume to be beach ball sized eye. <laughs> hmm. Well, that's not... I'm on patrol, sir. That is not of my doing. You'll actually have to go to the guard themselves. Now, uh, where is the guardhouse, exactly? There's plenty of them traced along the walls. Like, as soon as you entered in, there's a small little guard post. Works for me. I do a little spin like a Harlem Globetrotter with it on my finger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after a half hour has passed by, you walk out with a... You can either walk away with rubies or you could walk away with gold. How many rubies are they offering? They are offering you 50 rubies. How many gold are they offering? Uh, 700. I take the rubies. Yeah. All right. Uh, so he returns to you with some more gold. This is more money than I've ever had in my entire life, <laughs> mind you. Now we just need a way to use it. <laughs> well, uh, the guard's still there. He's just like, well, lucky for you, sir. We take rubies and we also take gold in this city. Without permit? He like squints at you. See he's, what he's gonna roll insight. <laughs> uh, you roll insight as well. Insight on him, okay. Five. That was a bad you just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. 
You're not seeking to forge a permit, are you? Oh, absolutely not. We're trying to stay above the law, of course. Hmm. I imagine. I guess that's why you have taken gold instead. No, I, I apologize, took, I took sir. The we... Yeah, he said he took rubies. Yeah. Oh, he took rubies. Yes. Oh, he took rubies. Yeah, I have them. I'm just not able to use them yet. I just know what their value is. But since we are looking to acquire a license legally, of course, to use them, I figure this will be more useful for me in the future. Roll a deception. I, I believe we even discussed <laughs> earlier in this <laughs> night that this is a legal way of acquiring it. Mm, but you're talking to the sun guard. Sure I enough. Guess, I guess they don't like it. Works for me. Deception is a modified, well, obviously modified, 24. You beat him. He <laughs> takes your word. That's fair enough, sir. I apologize. Again, we've had some very troubling nights, as I am not sure if you've uh, been told, but one of the affiliates here has actually had their son kidnapped by slavers. I have heard that. We're trying to keep our ears open for any information. That would be most appreciated, sir. Of course. That, and also we've been having a few troubles with some local wildlife. There have been a lot of s savage attacks on folk who have been receiving a lot of bite marks. That's probably from this, uh, from the barrel creature we were dealing with. I kind of point out the, the bite marks oh, that no, I'm they're sure way, are around They're much more subtle than that. We are, we are, the, most of the guard here believe that it's vampire bats. Vampire bats, you say? Indeed. Oh. Or at least something, or... I, I think this is a whole bunch of hogwash, but some of the locals around here are claiming that it's a chupacabra. Okay. How many goats do you have around here? Quite a few. <laughs> ah, that would do it then. Not many anymore. Not any, <laughs> they, they, there have been, this is about the tenth attack we've had in the past week. Where are these attacks? Mostly outside the city. Is there a particular location that has the highest concentration? Unfortunately, no. It's mostly at random. Hmm. Shame. Any, any people vampires or just the bat kind? People vampires. You know, the yeah. type with the fangs and the... Ooh. No, sir. That, we've only just had small animals, like maybe about bites the size of a coin. Hmm. Nothing large like that. That would be... That would bring mass hysteria and something we would be way more attentive to. No. The, the sphinxes would be able to sniff that out quickly. Ah, perfect. Oh, sphinxes can, can sniff out vampires? See? They, the sphinxes here are attuned with angelic blood. Okay. All right. Any, any sort of bite from a necrotic creature would most likely kill it. Hmm. Huh. And I guess those rumors were mostly falsified then. Well, in any, in any case... You are off to the Paper Wasp, then. That's no better place to get a drink from what I hear. Indeed. Rest a while from the sun. It's been particularly hot today. It was indeed. Definitely. Thank you for your help, sir. You walk Can inside to the Paper Wasp. It's a very large tavern. Uh, looks like it's about four stories tall. Uh, on the inside, it's uh, sandstone. Uh, it's very cool on the inside. Looks like it's very well insulated. There's a... It's very, it's very lively. There's a bunch of folks here who just look like they got off of work. They're just here to have their, have their woes of the day just kind of melt away. Uh, there are a few other folks here that look like they're a little bit more of a sell sorty type or adventuring type, but not too much in common with the, with the basic common folk here. You do see a couple of the kobolds of the same regiment as before that are sitting in the back trying to discuss like their strategies and whatnot. Uh, as you sit, as you see those, uh, those, uh, characters, a small old Janasi woman kind of just, like, hobbles on over and kind of just hands them some mugs of ale. All right, young man, have a good one. You have, you best behave. You best behave. All right, where are my layabout grandsons? They should have been at work by now. Oh, welcome to the paper wasp, young man and, and, and lady. Well, well what, what, uh, what brings you in here? We're see seeking an audience with, I keep forgetting this guy's name, Hippolyte N uh, Neris. Uh, we were hoping to stay the night if we don't see him tonight. Oh, Hippolyte, oh yes, dear. He usually comes about nine o'clock after doing his paperwork. If you stay a while, you'll absolutely fight him. Oh, that'd be terrific. Uh, can we get a table and maybe some drinks? Oh, you can sit at the bar. It's qu currently open as of late. I can get you all kinds of drinks. Where are my layabout grandsons? <laughs> ah, the youth these days. Hmm, especially when they were kicked out of the academy. Oh, shame. 
Well, it, it wasn't of their doing, mind you, but they still need to get their work out. They, you see, my grandsons went out into the desert and found one of the relics near near Balibar and found something and gave it over to the Neris and they gave them a small stipend, a stipend enough big, a uh, stipend well big enough to get them actually into the College of the Sword. Oh wow, a College, college of the Sword. Say. Wait, that the Bardic College of the Sword? Yes, dearie, it's in the Acropolis. Ooh, well, unfortunately. One of someone in the Neris deemed it as a ruse and took away their money, and they were forced to come back here to work for their poor old daughter and grandmother. But I could still punch a man real hard. I could. I could punch oh, him square. I bet the you can. I mean, like this. Watch this. You see that man over there? There's like a there's a big fat guy kind of just like hobbled over with a bunch of drinks like around his head. She like walks, I do. She she kind of like waddles on over. Takes her hand, slaps his knee, and a gust of wind tornadoes him up and hits the floor. Pay your tab and get out, you layabout! The, the guy just, like, looks up. Ah, ah, okay, ah, here you go. And he, like, runs out. Any of those uh, drinks around him still have, like, liquor in it? Are any of them full? They were, like, half shots and whatnot. Some of them, like, not enough to get an actual drink in. With yeah. her gust of wind little thing there, she kind of just, like, starts picking up all the glasses. Oh, by the way, dearie, if, if you need me for anything, just just call on... Hold on, I'm getting her name. Yep, <laughs> just call on good old Belief, and I'll get you a drink too, sweet. Belief. Belief. B-A-L-E-E-T-H. Belief. Absolutely, Miss Belief. Alrighty, uh, we're very close to ending, but I will lay us off on a couple other things. Uh, so... You guys are going to go ahead and get yourself a drink, get yeah. yourself a... Uh... Dagon's going to go make some friends and see who will buy him a drink. <laughs> well, as you say that, I'd like all of you to roll me a perception check for rumors. Just to eavesdrop on some conversations. 18. Perception is uh, 21. 15. All right. Okay, Dagon, you're hearing more rumors of that silver-haired woman and a very wrinkly green serpent walking out of the plateau. Out of the plateau. Uh, her and a crew of people have been walking in and out of Furfos for quite some time and going into the plateau and making it out unscathed. Uh, Ezra. Uh, you are still hearing talks of town of the town talking about the fact that the Neris is, uh, one of the Neris members' son was kidnapped. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're, they're all talking about how they feel so bad for the kid. He's only like four years old and he's going to be taken to the uh, Scorpion Queen. Uh, let's see. Eloy. I apologize for that. That was, uh, allergies there. Eloy. You start overhearing that there's this strange satyr boy who has been constantly, like, going up to sell swords, asking to go in search of the Splendor Maw. Most people around the town know not to get into it because they all know that it's just a bad time, and they're not paying him any heed, but he's very uh, consistent in trying to find people who will go out to find the Splendor Maw with him. As he's heard rumors that the Splendor Maw might be even closer to uh, Furfos than ever before. You all reconvene, and so does Frida, after getting a little bit of uh, information. Uh, <laughs> uh, Frida kind of just like chuckles to herself as she has like a little shot glass of, of whiskey. Well, I heard our dear friends the Ashdrakes have been about. Really? Yes. Turns out a lot of people around here have been noticing that a uh, uh, couple of brothers who are dressed to the nines in a cultish attire have been making residence in the Neris estate. Hmm. I never understood why people get so excited about them. We had a friend who really, really liked them. Why? I mean, we met a couple of them. They were super nice. I've heard less nice things about the others that we haven't met, though, and this sounds like this might be them. Yeah. One of the brothers is okay. The other one's kind of a dick. Mm. Gabriel's a loud fellow, but at least he's very nice. Whereas Fritz, on the other hand, I could take him or leave him. I I wonder if he feels pain. I think he deserves some of it. He's a prick. I tried to stick him with a bill one time. He shot me in the leg. 
Speaking of which, he's drinking an <laughs> ale that's left on somebody else's tab. Someone get you a drink? Yes. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's impressive how quickly you make friends, Dagon. All right. I'm a very charming person. As you guys have kind of just like, sat down it. or taking your taking your time, like just waiting, it's now it now just rings up nine o'clock. Half hours passed. No word of a Luxodon entering into the building. Hmm, that's rather strange. Bal- yeah. uh, belief says as she's looking at her clock. Yeah, shall we address the lack of an elephant in the room? <laughs> <laughs> You and everyone else says that joke, son. <laughs> well, no, I said it first tonight. <laughs> well, he, said, he said it before me. It is pretty impressive. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not like him to never be late, but I'm pretty sure probably his paperwork is just very encumbersome today. Nothing to get upset about. I'm, I just worry about my regulars is all. Another half hour passes, nothing. A door, the door opens up, but there's a, uh, one of the, uh, a human commoner kind of, like, latched onto one of the guards as the guards kind of, like, just hobbling them in, just like, Belief, we have someone who absolutely needs a drink right about now. We just will not stop yammering. <laughs> kind of, like, hold it. He's cradling something in his arms, and he puts it on the table. It's a dead pseudo-dragon. We're a pseudo dragon! Something got to it! Zest for that. No, you can't eat it. Ignore him. I go over. I'm not going to, like, really say much, but I just want to get a closer look at this pseudo dragon. Alrighty. Uh, would that be perception or investigation? Or That'd be a perception, perception if you're not going to actually go up to it. Okay. Uh, in that case, 11. It looks like there's a giant tear at the neck. Mm. Most of its blood is around the neck, but it's not bleeding out anymore. It looks like it was kind of uh, bleed. It, it looks like it bled out. Excuse me, where was? Wh- where did you find your? Uh, I went home from work, and he would, usually he sits out in the window, and he he found him like this on the floor. Mm-hmm. Can what? Eloy put some gold down on the table. Can we get this guy a drink? He looks like he does need it. I am so sorry for your loss, sir. <laughs> So I had him since I was three. Oh! Now Eloy starts to cry too. That is the saddest <laughs> story. <laughs> Belief kind of comes by with a uh, comes by with a giant like lug of ale and like hands it down on his table. She kind of like grabs Ezra and like grabs him by the <laughs> arm and pulls him down. Uh. You said you were looking for Hippolyte, yes? Yeah. Okay, I'm. I'm I might just be a little paranoid, but. With something like this has been common far too often, and they're growing. It's growing far. It's growing far too common, and the fact that one of my regulars is not in on the allotted time. I know it sounds crazy, but just I have a bad feeling about this. If you are looking for Hippolyte, would you mind going about town and like at least finding him for me? If you could at least find him and tell me he's okay, I'll let you stay the night for free. Uh, sure. We we've, we've been look. We need to find him anyway, so this only helps us. We'd, we'd be happy to look into it for you. Oh, thank you so much. I'll go. I'll go prep your rooms. Like any news, any news, please, just to at least, at least make me feel better. Absolutely. I uh, get back to the group. Is is Eloy still over there crying with the pseudo dragon guy? <laughs> if he is, that's fine. Frida, Frida just like rolls her eyes. It's just like, oh my god, everyone knows pets don't go to heaven. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Dagon's just looking over. Hmm. She like she like says a small prayer to try and comfort the man. If it makes him feel better. Its soul's nowhere near here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so Ezra comes back. <laughs> yeah, basically just walk over to the crew. Uh, Belief has Belief says that she's willing to uh, to let us room here for free, but we have to see if we deal. Can... <laughs> I like your angle, Dagon. <laughs> And that's where we'll end the session tonight. <laughs> Good hustle. <laughs> we'll pick up with this next time at the table. But before we go, we got, as per usual, some fan art. Yay. Artwork. To fawn over. And boy, are there some to fawn over today. Let me oh, I see pop what you're open. saying. I, I don't even know what I'm saying. Fawn over. Ah. Does a certain young lady show up in this? I don't actually. I don't, know. I don't actually I think she does. <laughs> <Nuts>. <laughs> no, I don't want to update my email. Go to hell. There we go. Profile. All right. Starting at 
a number one. We got Ooh. by Scrap Paper 22, Frida Gazimar and her stand. Does it have a name? Does it have a name? Yeah. Doesn't look like it has a name, but let's see here. Uh, Doctor Feelgood is what I'm Ooh, gonna go yeah. with. Yeah, no, that that's 100. Yeah. She's the one they call Doctor Feelgood. I can't, I can't argue with that one. But she'll thank make you him feel all kinds of things, but all right, ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> she will be your Frankenstein, though. Frankenstein. Yes. But thank you kindly. Scrap paper 22. Next up, by all four one. That's all A L F O O R O N E. We've got the new crew bonding. <laughs> Sucking you all bags. I talked to ghosts. <laughs> you suck, Dad. <laughs> and then down we have. Uh, uh, Eloy and Dagon. Therapy's nice, isn't it? Yay, we're bonding. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you kindly, Alicia, or Al for one. Next up, by Artem Mewtwo. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little caricature of Dagon and Chick. I like that Dagon, Blah. Dagon. Blah. <laughs> uh, Good looking shit. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad we got to bust out the combat this time, because... That is specifically what Dagon was designed around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good shit. Thank you kindly, Artem Mewtwo. Next up, by yeah. Jasper PRL, we have Old Man Khan. Yes. Hold on. I like. I love his like old 1950s bank teller getup. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Here comes Grandpa. Here comes Grandpa. Let me Here count. comes Grandpa. Let, let, let me count your money. While One. I check the halfpennies, here's a Charleston Ooh. for you, young man. Here, have a butterscotch chew. <laughs> oh, dang it, well, I lost well, count. Well, boom, One, let me count it. You know how they say an elephant never forgets? Who said that? <laughs> Thank you kindly, Jasper PRL. Next up. By Bangarang Aliko, we have a tearful goodbye. A group hug. A group hug. There, there we are. She said goodbye. The French say au revoir. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you later. And then wake with his ugly one piece crying. <laughs> <laughs> Snot dripping everywhere. Thank you kindly, Bangarang underscore Aliko. Next up. Ooh. Yeah, by Slug Bunnies. We got this great looking, like, I'm not sure if that's like Ukiyo kind of art, but yeah. it's definitely Japanese inspired Nedra there with that kimono and. God, yeah. I, just lo I love the shades of purples and pinks. The colors, yeah, are yeah. real cool in this. Yeah, it's, it's great. I fucking love it. Thank you kindly, Slug Bunnies, whose commissions are open. Yeah, there's a little skull down there. It's That's great. I, I would use that as a background a, of yeah, some sort a, if it were yeah. formatted for such a thing. Next up. <laughs> look, by, at, look at his hand. Yeah. He's got you now. <laughs> he's got you. He's got you. That, that, that's totally an Ezra thing. <laughs> Zing. Gotcha. <laughs> Fenris Reed made this uh, 3D modeled Ezra. That's awesome. And yeah, that's slick. That's slick as hell. Says it's not quite where he wants him yet, but too lazy to do a proper background. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He can stand up no, above yeah, the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Ezra walks on water. He'd have a trick to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Thank you again, Fenris Reed. Next up. We got some <laughs> yeah, disenchanted yeah. Uh, Mr. Large and Frank Motion. Or, yeah, it's by Scandranon01. They, uh, <coughs> excuse me. They also, like a special mention, because I personally like that one. Yeah, they there's, one, there's of, one of uh, it as well, but I thought the two characters were a little more Oh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, but I was just more. saying, like, there, there's a one of it, but he's drawn like Lucy. Yeah. And it's so good. I love it. Next up, by Harkin <laughs> Christian. We got a terrifying squirrel monster it there. <laughs> just, yeah, honey. <laughs> Like normally he, has his, life, normally he has his adorable little frog face, but then honey face. <laughs> <laughs> He's slowly turning into that. I love his chunny, uh, chubby little Winnie the Pooh dad bod. <laughs> yeah. Dude, all he eats is oh, honey. Bother. It's got to go somewhere. Oh, bother. 
<laughs> I'll bother you if you don't feed me. Christopher Robin, give me the honey. <laughs> or I'll, I'll consume hurt. your souls. <laughs> Thank you kindly, Harkin Christian. Good stuff. Next up. This one, oh. fucking diabetes 24-7 <laughs> by the Haunted Toaster. Just look at that little wrist. He's so goddamn cute. <laughs> by the way, Mr. Large from now on to me is just a giant sloth, and you can't convince <laughs> me otherwise. A giant sloth with Popeye arms. I like that. It's not canon, but I like that. Oh, that's that. fine. That's fine. I like that. It's, it's not it's, canon, it's, it's though. How, it's how I picture him in my head, No, though, that's fine. That's super fine. <laughs> Just but like just look at that little, that little wrist. He's just like, hi there. I'm here too. You're big. You're small. I also like this idea of us infantilizing a wrist. Meanwhile, he's actually just a fully functioning adult. Just like, what are you doing? Oh, yeah. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's, he, yeah, he's an adult of his race. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, but this is very awkward. <laughs> yeah, put me down. I'm not actually a child. Please he's, stop that. He's, he's more mature than <laughs> Wake is. Either way, thank you kindly again. Haunted Toaster Zero. Adorable. Fucking love this. Next up, by MFS Ooh. Arts, we got uh, full full Dagon trigger Dagon. <laughs> Ready to cut it loose. Heaven or hell, let's rock. Bang, bang. Bang, bang, devil trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I love his, like, laser techno wings. It yeah. Looks yeah. Like. No, it, it's sick. I, I even love, like, the giant bootstrap boots. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, from this far away, it's not what it's supposed to be, but from this far away, it almost looks like, you know those high school S's you write in sketchbooks? Oh, yeah. yeah. It the looks like that yeah. from here, and I'm like, that's fucking perfect. <laughs> it, it, that's Dagon to a T. <laughs> he drew those he, S's he, he all is, day. He is the type of character that I think a 13-year-old would make, <laughs> which is why I wanted to make him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, Dagon Huxley by MFS Arts. Always love it, MFS. Good shit. Next up. (laughs) (laughs) Disney has I couldn't not include this. It's so fucking adorable. By, uh, this is by Red Flame Kitty, who has just been doing some amazing stuff lately. But we got Pokemon Master Eloy here. (laughs) He doesn't need Pokeballs. They just, they come to, they come for his music. Dagon has nothing but exclusively Absols. (laughs) Ooh. All they do is predict terrible things. Ah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, adorable stuff. I, I love, like, the only way I can describe this, like, if you zoom in on his face, that's Disney Prince Eloy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only way I see it. Oh, Willikers. <laughs> oh, Willikers, everybody just loves hey, me. Hey, you dummy, get in here for a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Eloy is a Disney character surrounded by anime characters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so kick the parts. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. And is that the last one, or do we got one more on there? It's yeah. the fucking goofy That's all to everyone, Sora. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Lost Saranus World in Kingdom Hearts Three. Let's do it. Oh, Let's do fuck it. Yeah. Let's get it Sprung was probably Donald. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. We'll see you guys next time at the table. Have a good night. <laughs>